so let's begin. So it is a it is Tuesday, April twenty third, and you are tuned in to the regular scheduled selectmen meeting. We are being taped by Area 58, and it can be seen on YouTube and local cable channel 15. And we'll begin by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, so we have an appointment with the, our town moderator, so we're going to just sort of yep. wait on the other stuff. So thanks, Dennis, for coming well, in. Well, thank you for allowing the time and, and uh, for my still learning curve to be you know, moving forward in the right direction, because I'm still certainly, even though we've had two special town meetings that I've been a, a, an active participant as moderator, I'm not necessarily feeling as confident as I'd like to. It's a, yeah, it's complicated. The town is complicated, and I think even sitting in the audience, it's complicated for people. Yes. There are opportunities for people to be informed. We don't always take up on that. You know, we don't always take advantage of that, which poses a number of problems, I think, sometimes when you're trying to move a town meeting forward in a, in a productive way, in an efficient way, and in a way that everybody feels like they've been listened to and heard. And, and at the end of the day, even though I might not agree with all the decisions that get made, at least it was a process and I had my opportunity to say what I needed to say, win some, you lose some kind of a thing. I, I know from my own experience in this town that there are times when that doesn't happen. And people <laughs> walk away frustrated or angry. And in some cases, there might not be anything you can do about it. My hope, is that there might be some things that we can do collectively as a, as a town that might improve some of that, whether it's preparation, whether it's acknowledging there are certain things that we each do that might not be as productive as other things that we could do. So I just figured it was a, it was worth uh, talking about. Um, and you know, I, I like to be somebody who is a middle of the road kind of person. I'm, I'm not a big fan of either or choices. I think most of the time we get into the both and situations where it may not be 100% what we want, but it moves us forward in a good way. So I don't have a lot of answers and, and I hope that in asking even for this meeting, I wasn't being critical, being the new kid on the block, it's kind of presumptuous of me to start to think that I'm gonna tell anybody what people should and shouldn't be doing. But I do think it's a good conversation. No, I think it's oh, great think that you want to reach right. out and, and let's um, work on that. So uh, do, what are some of your suggestions? Well, um, I, the questions I have um, were, sometimes I got the impression uh, that, say, a finance committee felt it wasn't given enough time on some of the matters that were they were being asked to make recommendations on. I understand, and in talking to you folks around some of the warrant articles that were on the special town meeting, that sometimes you can't help that. But it leaves the impression that they're not having enough time to consider it, and there are times when I think um, their vote shows that, not just a split vote, but they'll almost seem to have dissenting views because there wasn't enough time for them to really walk through it, decide, and then give recommendations that they can feel more confident of. So I think there are times when it just feels like um, they're not given enough time or there isn't enough time. So I think, you know, I, most of the work of these articles gets done at finance committee meetings. And there are at times there's some new information that might show up at, for instance, you know, there was some late minute information for the water suppression system that they, we had met with them earlier in the night to talk about. So there are instances that things aren't decided, but for the most part, especially on the warrant articles that are on the regular town meeting <coughs> warrant, the capital items, they've had ample time to have that discussion. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think that you have a new finance committee as well. It's nice to see some, mm -hmm. at least from what I can tell from the outside, that there are additional people being, I mean, I'm a big fan of keeping encouraging people, yes. keep asking them to serve. Yes. Um, even those folks who are not as comfortable with some of the decisions that get made, if at least it drives them to be an active participant. I know for me, boy, when you start to really roll your sleeves up and know how complicated these matters are, not so easy to make a, a snap decision or a snap comment about, you know, yes, this is a great idea or this is a terrible idea, 
without it thinking it through. So it's kind of nice, yes. I, I think, and I'm hoping that with the, uh, I think the personnel committee and the finance committee and the planning boards, all the slots that are open, that we continue to drive people toward filling them. And we like to have diversity, so we like to have people that, that don't always think the same as, like I, sure. you know, whenever we've done, you know, our um, special committees, you know, I think it's important to fill it with people that don't necessarily believe the same way that we believe, because that's when best ideas are made, you know, I where, so. and I think that we have come up with that when we've done the fire study and we've picked very conservative people to be on it to really force us to be better at what we do and so I think that our finance committee is so bright and I think that we're really lucky to have them I think That's that good. you know part of that unfortunate thing for the town meeting if they didn't seem like they had a lot of time to debate it is that we had a lot of last minute information coming in but I think sure. going into town meeting this year that we've been able to do the work and and um, they've been able to sort of debate, and I think that when they come in, it, there won't be that situation. Well, it's interesting because the other thing related to that just triggered my mind when you were, we were talking about it, that the special town meetings are, are, are meant for that. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes I think some of the art items that get put in there because you figure, well, you're going to have a warrant for one or two items. You might as well have some unfinished ones or whatever. But whenever things like... Um, I think salaries uh, or adjustments get made there, it, it feels to some, and I've heard some criticism of, this should be done at annual town meeting. Yes. And, and again, I know there was an ongoing study, I, I remember some of the, the rationale for that, but it leaves some with the impression that if you do a special town meeting, there might be less people going and less opposition mm -hmm. and people might be looking to put through. I don't assume intentions, but other people might. And then sometimes okay. that gets to be a challenge, I think, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, of the actual meetings themselves, and again, I'm only with two special town meetings, um, I was amazed at how much I learned in listening to all the conversations. And I know for some of you, you eat and sleep and drink this stuff that um, you might get frustrated of kind of answering some of the same questions over and over. But it wasn't, and I have to say this, I, I don't want to know if I should feel embarrassed by this or not, but as I'm standing up there listening to the, the discussion around how the old system wasn't properly used or why it wasn't, it, it took me the whole length of time hearing probably from the dozen, two dozen people who spoke before I got it. And, oh. and it, all, it was amazing to me how clear it was at the end of the conversations. And I don't know that you can avoid um, or have a presentation that might have been a little clearer, but it was amazing to me. I just walked away going, oh, that's why we're doing this. That's and I thought to myself, if we had been able to say that earlier or more clearly, I think it might have been helpful. But I, I, I think people do need the opportunity to say what they need to say, ask the questions they need to ask. If anything, and this is just my own learning curve, uh, I, I got the impression that there were times when some folks in, in, in the group or, or among our leaders might have felt you left too much time for us to go on, because sometimes you can. You just, but for no, I me... I think so. I like the most debate is you... I, I mean, I like yeah. to hear the questions. Yeah. Again, it makes us better. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the way when I, we, we finished up, I felt better about it going, oh. And, and, and again, I think, at least the feedback I heard was people did feel heard, and I think that... Yeah. To, to be honest with you, that's one of the outcomes that should always be. It might not be I'm going to get what I personally want, but I at least I was heard, or other people were heard, and they can walk away. Yeah, I mean, there is a fine line between a question and kind of, you know, being difficult at times. I mean, I think sure. that there's, there's, you know, I definitely have seen that, but mm -hmm. I'm happy to answer the question, you know, as many times as I need to. I don't want to be um, mocked. Mm -hmm. and treated yeah. with disrespect, right. Right. which I think I got a little bit of over uh, the last couple of town meetings. But, um, you know. And, and that is the challenge, is to when to step in and say, this isn't acceptable, please keep the... the, the you know, my challenge, my personal challenge is, without, with, without as great vision as the rest of you might have, it's not easy for me to, to watch somebody's smirk that might go along with the comments. So, yeah, smirk, I don't mind a smirk. Yeah, yeah, but no, but I know what yeah. you mean is the disrespect yeah. that and I think Not just people, for me, it's just other, yeah. because these, we are volunteers and we're yeah. trying the best that we can and we don't have a um, alternative 
Oh, like I'm explaining the fact, right? Or mm -hmm. somebody's explaining the fact. And I don't want to get too much on it because it was just a little bit. Yeah. It wasn't like the whole meeting. No, but no. No. I'm saying that if you feel like we didn't want all that discussion, I can only speak to me, for me personally. I like to have as much yeah. discussion. And yeah. I like yeah. the people who don't always have the same view to speak. Because again, right. that makes us all better. Well, and, and that is the other side of it, is that there are times when someone's a repeat speaker and, and might be either repeating a point or gets to speak before someone else who hasn't had a chance. And those are times when, again, I might need a little bit of help to say that person hasn't spoken. We hear from them first. Yeah. It, it would be easier if I had 2020 where I was able to see that. And, and I have to tell you, this is a, a scary thing. I'm not. I'm 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 somewhat limited in that, and and it, and you all were tremendous in helping in, in making sure that someone didn't get missed, because mm -hmm. you know, I think that's that's key and yeah. critical to it. But but in, in general, I agree with you in that that the maximum time to allow people to f to feel they have a right to say something, but to stop people at some point from being disrespectful, and that's that's always going to be a a bit of a challenge. Just to you, you tolerate a certain amount. I, I think John Bruno and, and before him, my recollections of T.P. Elliott Smith, where they were both very good about keeping it non-personal. You know, you yeah. say, okay, let's talk about the issues. Um, we're not talking about the personalities. Um, don't don't address people directly. They're supposed to, everything is supposed to go through the monitor. Yes. And all those things that you know when you read the guidelines of how it's done. Um, I can, and I don't mind, I guess the other thing I wanted to say is, I don't mind being reminded of certain things or, or pointed something out from okay. me folks or anybody who's a, a, a member of the town to say you missed something or this is not helpful or because I think we all should be open to that. And, and, and in general, I found this, this town to be mindful of that. Yeah. So. Yeah, so whatever we can do to help you. Yep. No. Well, my, and, and actually part of my, my reason for wanting to have a bit of a conversation like this is I wanted to know from you folks because of your lengthy experience with it, are there things that we over the years haven't done or things that could be done that might continue to move us in a, in a good direction um, to avoid uh, contentiousness, to avoid things that are not productive and don't lead us to better outcomes? The, the hardest part, for me at least, is when I go into the post office and I, all the flyers that we send out letting people know about the meeting with the articles and stuff but laying on the counter at the post office. Or in the recycling bin. Oh, in the recycling bin. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> because some of those people, not all of them, will come to the meeting, had an opportunity to come to one of our meetings or come to another meeting, committee's meeting, to get the information they needed to make a decision. And unfortunately, they wait until the night to get there to get a, to sure. a whole lot of, to absorb at once. Sure. And I can understand the frustration because do it, but there were opportunities were given. Yeah. Well, and you know, and, and Charlie knows that if you go on our website, there are resources. You know that are that are. This is how. These are the issues. These are the terms that, that are that are described. Because you know, town meeting is is certainly someone walking in the door or doesn't go often isn't well versed about the kinds of things sometimes that are getting voted on. But there's this information is there if someone just goes to the site, clicks on it, and says, okay, I can download this or I can read it directly from the site. You know what's interesting is many, many years ago when I served on the Finance Committee, we did a series of local cable shows just kind of about town meeting and how it works, and we did like one show on the terms that you hear at town meeting, like mm -hmm. the terms free cash or, yeah. you know, all, a levy, what is a levy, what is all that kind of things. And I don't think people really watch local cable. I don't think we have the same engagement, but mm -hmm. I think, I wonder if th that we could do like a, like a flyer that, or we post something on the website for people who might want to, you know, access that, you know, yeah, so just to understand. Town meeting yeah, like what is town meeting? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could maybe stay. <laughs> I can do that. For you. And you could do the pamphlet. <laughs> well, well that, that's the, again. The, the, there are crib sheets, and, and I've right. seen that, that whether it's Charlie or other people put yeah. up there. I, I, I went looking for them when I said, "Oh, I got to better be versed in the right. basic that they're being given the information so that I know 
and, and can speak a little bit uh, with a little bit better authority. Uh, I will say it's nice, and, and I appreciate both town council and town clerk being there yes. um, to keep me out of trouble, you know, keep me doing the right things and all that. But but it, it's a tough if the resources are there and people can be encouraged. Um, there's only so much you can do during the town, the beginning of town meeting to say here's the things that you need to keep in mind without having that be in itself, you know, a half hour that we really don't have because there's so much to do in the town meeting. So you've been at two specials and you haven't been at an annual. Mm -hmm. And so typically at an annual, like the Board of Selectmen will do an opening statement, the Finance Committee will sort of do an overview that kind of sets the tone and just talks about the you know, not into a lot of debt, but the, the, you know, the basic theme of the town meeting, whatever the hot topic is. Yeah. And I think that's helpful. And I also think it's helpful that, you know, the finance committee does have time to explain why they did not support something. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important so that the most information that we can give, and I know that sometimes I get a little long-winded when I read or I have all these facts because I always feel like our job is to get all the information out there so there aren't any questions, you know, that... It, well, you can reduce them anyway. You, you yeah. probably never eliminate them. <laughs> no, I understand. Because always have questions. And that's, no, that's, that's good. Thing. Yeah. So I think, I don't know, I think, I don't know, do you have any thoughts on that? No, I, I think you've touched most of it. I, the more information, the better. Uh, that's always the key. Um, especially the first night, you get into a second night of a town meeting, people tend to be a little more curt because everybody wants pretty much to get it finished yeah. um, so there's that different dynamic mm -hmm. but but at least starting in I think the intention has always been to provide as much meaningful information not just information but meaningful information yeah. Yeah. and to your point earlier putting it in such a way as to have people actually understand it that's the challenge yeah. Be, to your point again when you're talking about things you know about you tend to shortcut a little bit when you discuss them yeah. uh, that other people are you know, and what I've come to learn in the last um, couple of weeks is that not a lot of towns bring their warrant down to the level of which we do. I think that we really are the purest form of democracy, mm -hmm. where a lot of towns yeah. have a vote just on the budget overall, and they don't even see the line items. So the people just see uh, in the printed warrant what the fire department budget is, what mm -hmm. the town clerk budget is, it doesn't go line into by line by line, and, they, and their um, warrant articles you know, the big capital items that they're purchasing are also within the lot, in the budget, so people don't have any kind of idea. I don't think that we should do it that way. I'm just saying that yeah. for the town of Halifax, we've been such full disclosure, well, and I think and, that's and, what and gets most of the debate, which is I think is the healthy. part that makes me nervous, but it's a great thing to do, is line by line by line, yes. asking for holds. I mean, that, that, you're right about that. It's the purest form of, you can put a hold on yes. it, ask it to be described, ask it yes. to be, you know, uh, justified, if you will. And, and I do think that the town, the balance is always here from, and this is just my experience as a resident, is it's always been what are the needs and, and, and the departments trying their best to meet them and the town's taxpayers who are saying, is it, is it here? Is, is it enough? And, and do I, can I afford a certain town rate? Can I afford a certain evaluation yeah. in order to get that to balance? And, and, and I think if we, we keep reminding people that this isn't an us against them, this is all of us trying to balance everything so that everything works. Because we're just recommending. Right. So we don't have the power. So for all the people that say, oh, you've spent all our tax, but we don't have the power to do anything. And again, when we did those series of um, cable shows many years ago to try to encourage people, we wanted to teach them about town meeting, thinking that that would make them want to come because they would understand it because it became pretty overwhelming, right? Yeah. Um, but it didn't get the typical taxpayer, which I like to say. We want a room full of t the average taxpayer. Sure. And I don't know how we can change that because I think that we've tried, we, we're on Facebook, we put the warrant, we mail the warrant, we have it on the flashing sign. I mean, I don't know what more we can do to encourage that. And I'm going to raise this, and, and, and honestly, I'm not at all advocating for this. Some of the, the feedback I saw, and this again was limited to only what we see on the, the several community Facebook pages for our town, was this issue of, I can't be there in the evening and shouldn't, wouldn't they have it on a Saturday? And I recognize that there are probably just as many issues yeah, sports, about it. Yeah. But, but that's always, and how do you get to the bottom of, 
what the, what's the percentage of people who fall into that category? Because so sometimes you'll hear a vocal few who will say, I, I can't do it. And, and, and how do you know whether they represent more right. or it works out here best because this is the way it's been running for the longest period of time. Well, and the nice thing about town meeting is that it's really one to two days a year, you mm -hmm. know, and and so I understand that some people work at night, but if we moved it to a Saturday, you're going to have a bunch of families saying, my children have sports and I have this. Oh, yeah. So I think it's hard to accommodate everybody. Yeah. And so you just, you know, as Charlie would say, tradition is like... So or if there's a sufficient number of people who want to make the change, it's in the bylaws. They can read the petition it. article yeah. for town right. meeting and get the bylaw changed as to when we have town meeting. Right. And the other thing is, I, I also hear that if you eliminate quorum, that sometimes more people come. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true. It's interesting, and, and I think on some levels it's a recognition that having 90 people and, and needing 10 and then having to move it, I mean, we were close right. to, to having to, to not be able to do the special and move it. And that would have been a shame because yes. of those 90 people who spent their time waiting and waiting and waiting and then mm -hmm. spending the time. So, uh, and yet, I you know I look at it. What do we have for uh, 3,200 registered voters, something like no, that? No, more like 5,200. No, really. Yes. yes. 5,200. So, so the fact that a special town meeting gets 100 people or barely 100 people—that's sad. And I think again, we couldn't accommodate 5,200. But you'd certainly like to see two or right, three or four. Right, not like yeah. There's not five thousand people working on a Monday night. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. Right. So it, it has to be like this is our community, and we volunteer our time. You know. But so at the same time, we had a, a article to eliminate quorum. Mm -hmm. Over 300 people showed up to vote it they out. Didn't want to do it. Right. 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 And so I maybe we should have that on the warrant every year so that we get people to come. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's how we get the well, town meeting. Idea. I don't know. Well, well, you know, and at the bottom line to it, and, and I, I've always felt this from my dealings with the town. I've dealt with being on the finance committee years and years ago, the library trustees for a short time, the, I think the master planning committee for a while, that the boards and the committees are, tend to be responsive. Again, I might not always agree with them, they might not agree with me, but I've never had a time where I couldn't meet, connect, and, and do that. I think sometimes the frustration drives us uh, when we might not like the answer or uh, we get frustrated with the same questions that people can get asking because they're not reading or they're not researching it. I think it, it's doubly hard for you folks and anybody else who has an official role not to sometimes get frustrated you know, not to you, you, you do get frustrated and, and I think that's unfortunate because there are times when people are only seeing that time and then all of a sudden the judge is oh you, you know they, yeah. they're rolling their eyes at me or they're what not are you listening saying? to me yeah, yeah, yeah exactly but and I, and I don't mean I'm not pointing fingers like yeah, this is the visual challenge guy he doesn't point oh, fingers yeah. you know but, but you can't but, see my face. No. Well, even, well, yeah, that's right. You're facing the other way. The question is, is that I can hear your voice. The, sta <laughs> the statement is, is that we're we're all crooks and we only come in town to raise our taxes. Then we leave town. Some afterwards. people say that, but you know, what I mean? even that's the, the, the vocal group that, that do sometimes say it. And and so all, all I'm saying in this is a statement that I would make in general of everybody. Our tones are important. Our body language is important. You know, if I roll my eyes as a town moderator when someone comes up, that sends an awful message to people, if that's the case. Or if I sound like I'm frustrated, and I, and I can be. I mean, I can get frustrated just because I'm not sure I see or I'm watching everything sure. it should be. And, and I don't know what the answer to that is other than I think, for me, it's affirming everything that's positive, giving people that permission and, and encouragement to participate, to get involved, not only in town committees, but also actively involved in town meeting. Right. You know, and, I, and overall, I think, on average, I think we do that. And, and so I, I guess I would just want to have us kind of accentuate the positive and, and try to minimize those negative things that we, first, we get frustrated with. That's all. I think we do. I think we do. I, th I think some of the frustration comes from uh, <clears throat> boards and committees that are proposing things that have spent a tremendous amount of time developing the, the article and then uninformed, more or less uninformed <coughs> residents uh, making negative comments. I think that le leads to a little frustration from boards and, and whatnot. But if everybody continues to be conscious of body language, of their interaction with the group, I think that should help. I and, and, and to your, and you're right. 
it's important. I can just tell you from, from my standpoint, and because I'm still the new kid, <laughs> I can't say kid, can I? I can say I'm the new person in the role. Um, I can't get away with saying I'm young at all, but I, I have to say that the town participants, the people who were there for the two special meetings that I've been at, were incredibly kind and gracious. I, I didn't get uh, the feeling that people were uh, there, there might have been an occasional frustration where I didn't see someone or they didn't feel the oh, outcome yeah, no. was what no, they wanted. I thought I they were I great. Think that no, I think, no, no. I, 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 and, and so, I, I, again, I'd like to continue to applaud that kind of thing and hope that that grows rather than focusing on the one or two who, who, negative moments that it might have been or the, the downs. Because overall, I was very, very impressed with the, 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 the townspeople and how they respond to things. And this is a great town to be a part of. Um, and, and one of the things I wanted to share with you, which I thought was interesting, because I'm looking all around for re resources of how I might do what I'm going to have to do better. Um, and there was a, uh, a town moderator from Medfield, actually, who wrote an article the night of their town meeting, the eve of their town meeting, which happens to be two years ago to this day. And I was reading through this letter, and I have to say it's a bit of a... a of, of an awesome job of writing. It just talked about some of the specifics, but one of the quotes I wanted to share with you, hopefully I'm going to take this to the right one here. Yeah, here it was. And I've, I've, I've kind of generalized this so that it reads in general to a town, but it, 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 goes, it, it goes this way. It is an important time for our town. Change comes in waves, advances come in steps. It is easy to feel and appreciate the change and growth evidenced by current and future change in key personnel and contributors, the current and future growth and development of town facilities and schools, the opportunity and challenges afforded by prospective projects, generational evolution and evolving expectations of the residents of the town. These and other forces and factors tell me we are living in transformative times. We are blessed by a very rich heritage reaching back for over three centuries. And going forward, our community will continue to benefit by thoughtful, informed, and clear-thinking people engaged in open dialogue, meaningful discussion, and making sound decisions. I kind of thought it yeah. captured what I hope all the towns feel and get to. And, and you know, this is a great country to be in, and I don't, I don't say that lightly. This is a great town. I mean, my family has been here for over 35 years, and my wife's family long before that, and, and which is why we kind of settled in this area. And um, just want those blessings to continue to be felt by hopefully everyone or as many mm. people in this town as we can. And I'm thankful of the roles that you all have that our committees and our town bodies have, and to your point earlier, a lot of work goes into the development of these items and issues and warrants, and, and it's challenging. You know, there's no way to do it perfectly. I don't know how anybody keeps any of this stuff in their mind without going a little bit crazy and getting frustrated from time to time. But I do think um, that our, our greatest resource isn't as much as we, we, we argue about probably taxes and dollars more than anything else. Are, are truly our best resource are the people that are here. Mm. Uh, the, the perspectives that they bring, the hard work that they're doing, whether you're talking blue collar, white collar jobs, whatever the occupation. I have this great respect because when I grew up in a, in a blue collar family and I didn't inherit any of the skills, so it drives me crazy that I can't build or can't fix things or can't do that, that, that thing. My thing is I've got a, you know, I've gotten a, an education and my direction was in human services. That's kind of what I know. But I've always kept this great respect for all, you know, what, what's the phrase? All work is honorable. Mm -hmm. and, and so all the perspectives in our town come mm -hmm. from different places. And, and I think if we continue to embrace that, I think we're going to continue to do great things. So I didn't mean to belabor oh, it, no, just no, to simply uh, tell you how much I appreciate the time and the effort. And looking forward to, as challenging as it might be, uh, our upcoming town meeting. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for putting so much thought into this. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was a good it's discussion. A great town. It's a great town. And, and there are a lot of great people. So we'll hope that everything continues to move forward. If there's things that I need to do or that I'm not doing, like I said, let me know. 
um, I'll continue to try to be better at my end of it. <laughs> just, I, I, I feel so lucky to have gotten through the first two special town meetings and hope that we'll get through this one. You will. Without too much uh, trouble. And I think the pre-town meeting is very helpful when we start going through the warrant. I think that it, it's, it, it kind of um, sets us up to be successful, yeah. to allow enough time for people and to rec recognize and identify the articles that might need more discussion than others. and some that might require um, Australian ballots. So I think that's that's coming up and I think it'll be helpful. Could never understand it. You know what he had the Australian ballot, don't you? Charlie tried to change it to the correct name and yeah. we just keep saying Australian. Well, they were all criminals in Australia because of England got rid of all of them. They, they, if they didn't vote the way the other guy voted, he, he was killed. What's the proper nice. word name? <laughs> Australian ballot. It's, it's not it's Australian it's ballot. Well, it's Australian ballot. It's a preferential system for yes, elections. Yes, so. yes, yes. So, Charlie, what's the... which? Well, it's, just a, it's paper ballot. It's fine. Paper ballot, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's more well, you know, and... and, and as, as we get more comfortable with each other collectively, I, I'd like to think that there are only going to be very few instances where you'd have to do that. It, it, there should be no difference of me voting up or down on any item, and that I shouldn't feel that my fellow townspeople should look at that in, in any other way than my right That's to be true. able to exercise right. that. That's true. And, and I, I, you know, I personally have never felt uh, pressure from police or fire or council on aging that, that when I get old enough they won't let me in because I voted something down or put it up. But, but, I, but I think, you know, we need to be acknowledging that there are times when people get to the point where that makes them uncomfortable yes. and they are. Right. Yes. You know, in need of feeling like, okay, this, this maybe is a sensitive vote, so there are going to be those occasions yes. where you use it. I'd love to think that we, we, would, we would use them rarely because we trust each other and we, we support each other's... That's a key word, trust. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. hard. Right? Sometimes hard. We'll get there. Yeah. We're not yeah. there yet, but we'll get there. A little bit. Anyway, you've got lots to do, and I know Thank you for else. coming no, in. We really appreciate it. We're excited right. to work with yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. All right. I'm going to sit back and behave myself. Okay. No. Or at least try. You don't have to. Oh, my God. Can you give me a couple of hours? Oh, my God. I wasn't talking about any of you while you were sitting back here. Yeah. You can roll your is eyes. That's your you phone want. over there? You can roll your eyes if you want. Oh, no. I can't roll my eyes. <laughs> Dennis, is that, is that your phone? Oh. Oh, no, that would be On terrible. the seat? Oh, why is it my pocket at the moment? Oh, no. Is that yours? Uh, that's Abe's. Abe's? Yeah. Don't leave your phone hanging around, man. Mm -hmm. Abe's recording. Oh, he's recording. So I think it's Abe's birthday. Is it Abe's birthday? Do we sing happy birthday to Abe? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we all have a seven. Oh, we do have a seven o'clock. Yes. Okay, happy birthday. Thank you. All right, we have a seven o'clock with the building committee. In council meeting. In council meeting. Hi. And the right. idea here is that to where we are right now is when we have been trying to raise funds for the renovation expansion of Pope's Tavern. We moved 104000 from the old landfill capping article that remained unspent after the project was completed to the article for the renovation expansion. Obviously, we ended up with out of project because town meeting had voted down the entire amount, but the 104000 was real money. It wasn't money that was borrowed. Um, for that project, so it's still there in the account. Uh, Sandy Nolan and Pia Maducci had checked with Bond Council and had confirmed that we do not need another appropriation, we don't have to go back to town meeting, if we're using the money for those purposes that were outlined in the original article, which was including for renovations for Pope's Tavern. So that money is available to spend. The challenge now is trying to figure out, since I'm sure there's a whole laundry list of things that need to be done there to try and prioritize and also separate those things that will have the greatest impact on preserving the building for the long term versus those that might be more cosmetic or more on a mm -hmm. wish list than, let's say, if we need repairs for the heating system or we need repairs for the wiring system or plumbing, the, the infrastructure windows. of the building, windows, um, those probably might be a higher priority depending on conversations. Um, than other things. And I wanted to have the Council on Aging and the Municipal School Building Committee come in and talk with the Board of Selectmen about that because I think for that to all move forward, there needs to be some sort of consensus among right. all the individuals about how we want to go about doing this. Makes perfect sense. John, you're in the corner. I can't see you. <laughs> Nobody puts John in the corner. 
Got me up. Got You don't have to be afraid. Muscle. You're the muscle. I know, right? Right. Bert, you're the muscle. Yeah. So, do you have some ideas? Yeah, I think. So. Well, here again, this was kind of dropped on us last week, so we uh, didn't really have a lot to talk with uh, the council of aging and our committee together. Uh, the scrap uh, we talked about the windows, and, and I think we have an article. We have an article right for windows. We we put into the annual town meeting because the water went right through mm -hmm. uh, and the loss of heat and, and the employees working behind it. You know, that, that should be done in the front anyways. Do you think that we would get the most for our... Well, that is, we that's a line a, item for that, That's a Warren yeah. article. Yeah. But we also can use the hundred and four. Right. Yeah, so whatever we want to use that money for. Uh, another, another situation we, we ran into in the late in the project was that <clears throat> we had some leaks over there, went down inside, and the area around the chimneys, yes, week for years, yes, is pretty much all rotted out, yes. So that's going to be uh, feel relatively that's the whole hundred and four. So to be done pretty quick. Well, I know Sandy, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to ask Sandy because yeah. we're on capital planning. To, um, the windows were being funded this year, not by the money that was set aside, correct? We have enough to not use that money. It was a possibility that we could use it if we needed to. Okay, thank you. Okay. And so I know that we were going to tip the chimneys as well at once. And it's well, we, yeah, we talked about this too. We, we turned to the uh, Historic Commission and the Historical Society and we talked about taking the chimney yes, off. Yes, yes. Uh, and we talked about that with uh, a chimney, what was the guy that was going to fix him, right? Yep. And <coughs> if we put up uh, fake chimneys, they have brick yes. lighting in there. Uh, because there's only one chimney that's used now. Uh, so if we take off the brick and all that heavy weight, it might be possible to build a, 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 a lighter weight chimney and, and still get the same effect, <coughs> but not with the brick. So we've identified the windows as an article. We also talk about the roof. And I know that one of the other largest complaint was the electrical. Like, is that? Well, then you go into us. Uh, it can be fixed up to a point, but it goes back to one little thing in the project. Once you open up the worm yes. here, yeah. you got a worm here. <laughs> and, and it's, I mean, we can put extra circuits in there. You might have to put a, well, you know, like, we got to put a whole more circuit board in there. Put a panel in. Yeah. yeah. Put, yeah. <clears throat> well, what about the doors, the front and the back door for wheelchair access? Well, there's, again, yeah, another well, whole thing. You just because it, into the framing. Because yeah. if you try to go wider, you've got the jacks and the king studs there. And, you, start, you have to start up on the walls and right. framing. <clears throat> and you get them inside, and that's nothing said about the accessory inside. Yeah, yeah, all the door openings are small. Yeah, yeah. Right. small hallways, and you can't use the second floor because there's no other. Yeah. I mean, you open up a, a lot of things. Uh, there's an article that got thrown out uh, this on, on the uh, handicap. Accessibility. Accessibility on all the buildings. The down. audit, yes. Right, well, that ended up under us last week, too. But if we open up, I don't know, is that self obsessed How does that word, Chad? It's a self evaluation, but we yeah. would go, we would have a firm come in to do the evaluation. It's not just the buildings, it's also programs and services. Right, right, right. but once we know what is wrong, right. we got to fix it. Yeah, and, and we don't, as long as we're making progress yeah. every year, it's not a situation exactly. that, you know, we do it and then the next day we have to somehow find all the money and the next month get everything done. But it will, it does give us a road to follow so that we can show progress in meeting the ADA uh, stipulations, laws, and regulations. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't a yeah. master you don't plan. have to do them immediately. Not yeah, I'm sure a lot has changed. Good faith we have had an ADA committee in yeah. this town for years. 10, 12 years, yeah. yeah. Uh, so nobody's really kept up with new laws. It's, it's a good yeah. faith effort. <clears throat> To, but, uh, to, you, know, you know, you get a program like that, I mean, they're basically Pope's Tavern is a dead Yeah, I, 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 I think, yeah. You know? 
uh, because you can't bring it up in North Dakota unless you bring that project. Right. And even and, and, you know, the ADA does not require that you make every single building and every single floor accessible. It's that you have, you need to make reasonable accommodations. So, for instance, if you're going to be providing services you need to make reasonable accommodations for those services. And so we, for instance, the COA has some activities here at the town hall when they have a large enough audience and right. they need handicapped accessibility. It's, it's a challenge. Where do you, where it's do you it's go? a challenge. Yeah. Where do you go? Well, I think the roof and the windows and the chimneys, I believe we have monies for the chimneys uh, from a couple of years ago. Yes, we had an article, yeah. yes. I, I think you're right. You, the, the, first priority is to secure the buildings yeah. and then try to work at whatever else we can do that would be helpful or beneficial to people using it or yeah, so there must be some small stuff we could do inside that won't cost a lot of money you know a few hundred dollars maybe that we could use that other money for but we'd have to discuss it with the COA and, right. and come up with projects. I think the uh, the roof issue is a little bit bigger than, yeah. than, than um, just mm -hmm. around the chimneys when we had the storm last year, we were fixing the section of the roof where the shingles were stripped. Yeah. Uh, the contractor put his foot through the roof oh, good. in two places that the shingles had not been stripped. And that wood underneath was soaked. Could you tell if that was water infiltration or was it condensation inside? It's not the venting? Condensation it was all dry rot. Okay. Oh. The rafters too, the rafters the themselves. Rafters. Uh, so it's, not, it's not ventilated. And the yeah. contractor that was fixing would you know, what painting, you know, he had just the look on his face, yeah, he yeah. was like, get me off this. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't put two bundles of shingles, No, couldn't stack them in the same place, just, just as the roof was going down. In which case, what I would recommend is that some of the money be then spent on hiring an engineer right. to come up with the specs to, just as we did for the school, come up with a new roof. Yeah. If we need to do that much work. I don't think it's, it's got to the point where it's not a patch working. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's a... Well, yeah, so well, we did some of that on the library a few years back too because we had a condensation yeah. issue there. That was a awesome. bad yeah, we, we did the gutter system. Yeah. They've, got, uh, they've got roof vents. They're not right at the peak, but they're up there. But there's nothing in the nothing There's to nothing to flow in there. There's yeah. nothing to let it, no convection. Yes, so right. There's, no, there's no, nothing to draw from. Right. right. So uh, I think that's. So I kind of focus on that because secure the outside of the building. If you spend money on making things pretty inside and that leaks on it. And you get infiltrated. Yeah, right. Exactly. What do we have set aside for the chimney? You said you had money for that already. There's an article for that. I want to say it's it's like, well I was going to say, right, Sandy? I think we did it about two or three years ago. I think it was about that. It's probably changed now. Yes. To, to, to yes. Charlie's point, though, we need, we need a, an engineering. Which hopefully won't take off. Review. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, it won't be as bit large a project as school. I mean, we, sh we should be able to get somebody. Can we draw off of anything we've already done in conjunction with the project? Was there yeah, an assessment we, made? We looked at the roof and the final phases of the project. And, and that uh, was, he said that he would work with us at no fair charge. I don't know what to extent, but. The original know, architect? The one that, in the last project. Winslow? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We still, and we have the plans, we have the engineering right. and specifications and such, and if they're relevant to the roof, we can separate that. Yeah, we might be able yeah, to yeah, utilize that stuff we that already have. Help. It just bothers me that we got to pay somebody to tell us we got a problem when we know we got a problem. Well, it isn't so much <laughs> that, it's, it's coming up with a solution with what, from what we've got. And to what extent it's going to be <sighs> in place or... Well, do we have any idea with it? Has anything been done in the last 20 years? No. Yeah. We've the had shingles. The shingles, some of the barn wood, wood right. has been replaced. The yeah. problem is they, they run vertical because you know, it's purlins underneath. Yeah, right. There's no, they're not locked together. That's right. Very that's, that's right, I forgot. It is all purlins. Yeah. Right. So, um, and then there's, there's, you know, there's some loosely insulation underneath, but there's nothing, nothing major up there. Yeah, it's only, there's only, Quite crawl space up there, right? right. Two feet to get up in there. Yeah, I remember trying to squeeze up in there yeah. last time. There's not much room to look from the inside. And then the other thing is, it's the same as with the wire, and it could be Pandora's box. You know, we could open it up and find out that the water's been coming down here for years and we don't know about it, and now you get a, it's the time to deal with it. But we have to, right? No, yeah, actually, totally. I'm just yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah. Warning us. Yeah, I totally, it could be. 
So why don't we eat the whole amount? Right. Even including you, the window. So we have to kind of decide, like, should we not do the windows? I think we keep the windows on the warm. As a yeah. I, okay. I, okay. I, they're both water infiltration issues. Yep. Okay. In I think what we should do is now that we know you want to go ahead and do something with that, is, is we'll, we'll work as a committee and work with the COA and come up with some yeah, projects that we could maybe put within that amount of money that you're going to, willing to put out. And, uh, yes. Um, hi. I, I just have a question because I'm kind of a new kid on the block. Yes. <laughs> but when the last roofing job was done, was that just supposed to be a patch? Or was there specs going out that it was more than that? Um, and if, if in fact, in the specs, was there any condition for replacing rotten boards? Or is there a warranty on the job that they did? I mean, those are some of the questions I have. And can we recoup some of that if, in fact, um, it was improperly specced initially? Probably didn't get swept well, over the roof. All the boards that were rotted out at that particular time or were bad enough shit were replaced. Okay. And then it was recovered with no shit. Okay. And so I think what Scott's saying is something about the way that the roof is designed, the rafters are going the wrong well, way. Maybe after 250 <laughs> years. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not offering it's stability. Be there of these new houses right. that so it's not done. offering stability yeah. for the roof, and so it has more of a chance of other sections failing. And so I think the idea would to have an engineer come in, re engineer the style of the roof so that we have a more stable roof. So the job that was done for whenever it was, when was the patching done? It didn't I think include it was a replacing the board. It was back in um, 2017. We patched it last year when a section got ripped off and installed. Yes. Previous to that, they reshingled the building uh, entirely, I believe. Yeah. And I believe that was about 11 years ago at this point. Mm, yeah. That sounds about right. Have we added any insulation or anything over the years? There's yeah, some loose fiberglass up there. Not loose, it's bats. But nothing you know. since that roof got replaced. Not that I didn't know that. I didn't know if we had a mass energy program or something that we took advantage of. Because that could be a contributing factor to the compensation if it wasn't done right. Jerry's put some spray in insulation in a lot of fireplaces because we've had a lot of new problems. Bees coming down and spraying in. You know, through the past nine and a half years that I've been there. No, I'm, so I'm, I'm thinking in terms the of the large. Yeah, yeah. That's just a yeah, gap. That would eliminate that because we capped the chimneys off below low roof line. Well, and, right, and then you can stop. eliminate all those people. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to prioritize it, put the, with meeting with the council agent, prioritize which ones you need, what do you think? That's what we'll have to do, I guess, and find out how much money we got. How you, have we can go with it. you have 104. How much? 104,000. So that's the chimney article mm -hmm. to put the chimney. Which is about twelve. Yeah, and if you get the I think the windows are like fourteen thousand. The no. windows well, are in an article for the <coughs> that's uh, I think they came in I think they came in around ten thousand dollars So if that article passes we can request the link. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite a bit of money. I don't know how far we go in today's times. It's kind of discouraging out there, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, but at least we can stop the leaking. At least we can stop the breeze coming in. Yeah, well, you know, uh, keeping water out of the building and, and all that, too. Water's huge. That's the major factor in deterioration. Right. Anybody else from the council? Anybody else from the council? Anybody want to? Way in. Thank you for your question. No. Okay. Well, so, thank you. and you'll be meet. You're meet, just so some of the council members may not know when you meet. How often? Every Tuesday, every month. So, and Barbara, I don't know who you might be bringing. So they're still meeting on the third Tuesday of each month. I'm sure. If, you know, it won't be. Obviously, we've already passed this month, but after town meeting would be what the 21st of May, I believe would be the third Tuesday. So. Yeah. Make sure that it's on the agenda. Make sure the council gets notified and have them come in. Town meeting's on the 13th, isn't it? Yeah, but the 21st is the third Tuesday. But we, we weren't going to meet in May. Because, yeah. Well, no, but I'm, I'm not saying the council needs to meet. I'm, the building committee is meeting in May. Okay. So you might have people from the council visit the building committee meeting that day. Okay. Oh. 
Simon zegt in de tekst. Hm? No. Waar je nou uit een graag hier zo langs met je hè? Van mijn nader mother. En over de laatste paar is Sam maar hier. Dat is wel een harde man van ons taal. En ik zie het, ik zie het taal gewoon different. Ik zie het gewoon different. Ik zie het taal government gewoon different. Ik zie het gewoon more. Uh, well, town manager style, I guess, where the other towns are going with Charlie being kind of like that. Nothing wrong with Charlie. No, I understand that. Don't worry. <laughs> but I feel like, I, I feel like the committees aren't doing a good job because we're kind of over rules. Like, well, take Pope's Tavern, for instance, okay? When we went to town meeting to get the $2,000, $2 million, that's only a couple of dollars difference. <laughs> uh, I, as chairman of the committee, found out it was on the town warrant when I read it in the book. So the building committee really wasn't ready to bring that to town meeting. And, and what happened was we got the $2,000, we voted it in. $2 million. $2 million. $2 million. Yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. money. But anyways, we voted the two million in, and the project wasn't completely done yet. So then when we had to come back at a special town meeting in the fall, which was absolutely disastrous, the town meeting itself, and go in and ask for another million dollars? Million and a half. Million and a half. I feel it lost its vote right there, because we should have asked for the three million at one time. It's hard to say whether we're wrong or not, but another thing that I feel that happened to me ever was that it was another five minutes before, ten minutes before town meeting, we're in the back room finding out how we're going to fund the project. Yes, that was a last minute thing for sure. I agree right. with you. And, yep. and that should have been the amount of money that wasn't in the warrant. It was an appropriate how much money. Yes. And where it was coming from. Because it was about a debt exclusion or not a debt exclusion. Right. And you needed to get the finance committee online. And the young gentleman that just joined the finance committee had it right. He voted no against the project because we didn't inform the town what we were asking for. And I see that in a lot of articles now. I mean, it doesn't appear to a town member doesn't know that you're going to vote 500,000 or 100,000 until they get here at town meeting. It should be printed in this book right here before they I, get them at home. I agree with you. Yeah, so I think we wait too long. Are, are we so well, busy? We have no, I don't think it's that. I think that I think in a couple of the cases we had some estimates that were wrong that we were relying on, as you know, you were part of a lot of those that right. we had estimators that gave us one number and then because you, you, I sat at all those meetings, so I was watching it along with you. So there was, it wasn't any, any of this was not intentional. You sat there and you saw the architect had come up with this price and then his estimator came up with another price. So what are you gonna do? And then we had a, we had, I don't know why we needed to do that tiny, I wanted to say it had something to do with the Senator Brady Senator was putting Brady. money in and we needed, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was, so it was a late. combination yeah. of yeah, all of that so that made it look like we weren't, I Why totally not? agree with you, but yeah. we, we were, um, as I, re as I recall, that $2 million figure was, actually it was like 1.7 or something, yes. and, and we, we, we wanted to throw in some contingency, yes. to, yes. to your point, so yep. we thought $2 million was an appropriate yeah, was number. It like schematics, it wasn't figured like construction. Right. right, exactly, the whole right. thing was not. Yeah, so we were ready to bring it to the town meeting, yeah. and it got on town meeting four somehow. But we were on the deadline for something, as the, Kim alluded to, I can't yeah. remember exactly but what that's it was. But that's just my opinion, it's our government. No. I mean, I'm from old school, I guess, and uh, I just haven't been able to catch up with this new management type stuff. I don't think it's new it. management. I think no. that it, you know, as you, you said, I, you know, I've gone to your meetings. I under, you understand that you sometimes have numbers that are surprises, and you think you have a plan. And I don't think that it's a way that people want to manage. I think that's what's happened with the last couple of 
projects and we haven't been happy either with the estimates yeah, and I mean, the way that it's yeah. gone down. I mean, it happened in our project, yes. it happened in the school project. Yes. In the fire suppression. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this, these soft costs with these yes. architects and the OPMs are just driving these projects right yes. on the site. And then they telling you this is the price, and then yeah. you go and you inform it. I mean, nobody wants to be the one going, hey, yeah, this is what they said. And then they tell us, and we're like, oh, mama mia, we just told everybody. Yeah. That's not how like we like to roll either. Right. I mean, so, we yeah. haven't been happy with the process either. Yeah. It's been very frustrating. And that's for sure. But I think that's the, what this gentleman, well, I forget his name, Dennis. Dennis Carmen. Dennis. What he was talking about, and he has talked, you know, and the town meetings are tough. Yeah. So the more we can inform them yes. with the accurate figures and how you're going to finance them before they get to town meeting, mm -hmm. the smoother the meetings are going. Well, and if the estimates were correct, we would be able to have the time to do that. But that's what's been right. holding us back. Well, and then yeah. we're doing last minute yeah. explanations. And I totally agree with you. It's been a really tough couple of projects. But I don't know how to fix the estimator or the timing. Like, I, you know. You're going to leave town. I think I'll go to Middleborough. Okay. <laughs> it really comes down to the fact that there's a trust factor. We trusting people that are out there making these estimates and everything that they're going to come through and give us a proper estimate, and they're not doing it. And it's just like going to you're going to buy your house and you get ready to sign and all of a sudden they tell you there's some problems with the house that you don't want and it's got to be fixed, but you just they just told you the day of the signing. Well, and you know from working on projects, like now there's so many layers of people involved because now you've got the OPMs, you've got not just the architects, so then there's more layers of people to have to rely on. I'll, and take, a, I'll take a big chunk out of, of the budget. Yeah, right. right, so it's... Not to you mention don't, prevailing. Lost, and we're told not to, we have to yeah. have mm -hmm. And you've lost the control that you normally have, would have had, so... Yeah, I wish everything was like the Hops Playground, where people raise the money and you want to do it and get it done, and there's no rigmarole about all the change. Yeah. And they raised all the money. Um, yeah. Aunt Amy, do you have a question? Yeah, I was curious. What happened to the money that the town said that um, out, um, voted for them to have? Like, where did that go? The Hops money? No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The two million? Yeah. Just yeah. Just yeah. Away. yeah. Two million. We, we didn't raise it because it didn't. The, the original appropriation, because the entire project it was not approved, we never borrowed that money. So it's never there. We, have an, we still have an outstanding authorization. If for some reason we wanted to borrow the money and try and w do the project for the two million, we could. But we don't have a set of plans that meets that. So all we have right now is a bonding authorization. We don't have money sitting in the bank. And what we, what we told the people that that $2 million was for wouldn't buy us that. And I don't know that it would be right for us to spend the money because people voted on it thinking they would get a certain building. So that would be tough. Yeah. yeah. No. I think in the long term, because it wasn't we want supported. To the seniors need space, and we can go and continue on. We'll try to bring back something on Pope, so we can go to a new building all together. I mean, whatever you're going to do is going to be three million plus. Yeah, because now it's going to be even more. It's probably going to be five. Probably going to be at least five. just did a new police station, 5,000 square feet. Yeah. But the accoutrements for a police station, which is a little different. Clinton. Yeah. And they're into it for about 3.1. Yeah, then they had some site work to do. Just finished the new police station at 7 million Yeah. I, I thought Clinton's was kind of a deal. I mean, the prices go out whack us. I mean, even windows. I was fat when it comes in, and the amount of windows we're going to put in is about $10,000. Oh, yeah. You know, the construction cost is just. So anyway, you guys got a busy night. Dick had a question, though. Oh, I just had a comment that uh, regardless of what happens down the road to Pope Stabbing, they want to at least preserve it as a historical building. Right. So these uh, items that they've brought up are going to maintain the building, whether or not it's a exactly. COA or a historical building. It does need a roof. It does need windows. We have the appropriated money for it. I think that's probably a good place to start. It's just my opinion. Amy, you had another question? I was going to say, can we do like a hops playground, um, raising money and do it that way? I mean, you know, you do... You, 
Could we? You could do it, but you know, Hops took six years to raise almost two hundred thousand dollars for a playground. You'd need five million, so it's yeah. tough. But the point is, is that the government says that if we're going to do any kind of town building, especially building, there are certain regs that you got to meet. You got to pay prevailing wage. You got to do all these things and get special permission to do it. Just as a citizen, you can't do it that way. That's unfortunate. That's what that's what hurts. Is that because it, because it's a town owned building, it does fall under certain regs that the state has put down mandatory. So, anyways, I oh. think we. Oh, sorry. We have one more question. I'm I, sorry. I just have one question. I don't know whether you, I, uh, actually tax for the Community Preservation Act. We do not. Oh, okay. Because I was thinking that could go toward mm -hmm. the windows and yes. the roof and the store Pope Tavern, and that would leave funds to go move forward. Yes. Hopefully, for at least planning for a COA building. We don't have CPA money, and we we didn't we tried to get that passed a town meeting many years ago, and it did not pass. So we don't have that ability to raise that additional tax revenue. All right. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. I'm sorry, what's your name again? Fred. <laughs> Flintstone? <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Hi, Harry. Hey. 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 I can't do anything over there now because I need to stand up top. I can't get up the stairs. I can't go to bed. I can't do nothing down the stairs. I can't take care. If you're lucky. I know. I know. I know. I know. For 30 years I've been doing this thing. For 15 years I've been retired and working up the same assembly. I've been there for the schools and every time we're coming up for a town meeting, something has to be done. Yeah, it has to be done. So we get that to off of the I don't talk to I talked to Troy. Troy, yes. Why can't we put it on an outside elevator? I do a lot, but it's less than 150000 So we. You get a couple windows upstairs, a couple downstairs, and bring it down. It's just a house. So the Council on Aging is going to meet with the Building Committee in May, and we can start doing talking to. Yeah, I know it's frustrating. Careful. I know. I know. Like the recycling, when I moved to town, I asked them. Now we have all the buildings. They're supposed to be self-sufficient. Let's go and pay for this. Nothing has changed. We pay for fire permits. All the towns from the Actually, we pay a lot for fire permits. It's actually pretty high. I don't think we have any volunteers. PDA has been dormant for at least a decade. We don't have enough people volunteer. Yeah, right? I know. I haven't been able to get all the Sorry, Harry. Okay. Take care. You've been heard. Yeah, been heard. Well, that's good. We hear you. For 15 years, we've been saying to these architects. I understand. For, uh -huh. for 15 years, we still don't have it. No, it's frustrating. If you have a building, you know, it's an industrial building. That sounds kind of cheap, and it's the right size that we want. Yeah, well, we tried to do the industrial park last time. Is that the same building? No, it's not. But we tried to do it before for even less money, and nobody was interested in going yeah, to the industrial park. 
wasn't, there's nobody wasn't either that time. This was the second one. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the, where the boat place was. Anyway. No, no, no Good apologies. Night, Harry. No apologies. We know you're frustrated. Good luck. Be careful, Harry. Oh. Oh, okay. Actually, so. that building wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. Hi, everybody. We're gonna. I've never used the gavel. I've never used it. Wow, felt good. <laughs> I hope you never do again, no. <laughs> I think it used to on your head. Stop. <laughs> all right, we have the VFW here. Are we, where are we? Are we? You are all, and yeah, you're gonna wear a hat. This familiar slash can't call us on. Terrible, we look for the white belts. That easy. Oh my God. I thought, did I say that too well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, don't make me cry. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> I'll be from the Veterans of Foreign Wars, oh. Halifax 6258. The Veterans of Foreign Wars awards this citation to Kim R. Roy, Selectman Chairman, Halifax, Mass., as an expression of our sincere appreciation for full praise for services rendered to the community. Thank you so much. I asked if I could do this part, Kim. Uh, I've never given an award to a first lady, and we we consider you the first lady of Halifax. Thank you. And there's an old saying about there's a handful of special people in the world, and that those kind of people are as beautiful inside as they are outside. Aww. And you are one of those. Thank you. So and much. I speak for all the veterans that uh, we hope now that you're retired and you've had some fun times and things that you want to do. And our fervent hope is that you have a long, healthy, happy life. Thank you. No flowers. And it's an honor to have called you a friend. And she's good like that. Whatever we've known you. I, I speak for all the veterans. I speak for everyone in Halifax. Thank you. And I speak for your your friends here. That your co. Uh, they feel the same way, I'm sure. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank you. 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 That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yes. I'm already, I've been doing it with you. Would you meet with the other two selectmen, please? Yes. Oh, please. Gentlemen, come over. Oh, so where am I going to go? Yeah, go in the middle. <laughs> I'm usually directing the photos. I'm not usually going to go. Oh, in the middle. Right in the middle, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. My son is a veteran, so this means a lot. Yeah. My boy is a veteran. All right. It should come on. All right. On the count of, let's see, uh, how about 13, one, two, one more. Thank you. Folks. Thank you, Dave. So, it no, means so you. much to me, really. Thank you so much. Thank you. So sweet. That would be pretty inappropriate. Oh, my God. That was so nice. Sure. We've done this twice. In the infinite wisdom, they spelled Halifax. We, we, we got the change, we missed the process of changing. Okay. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> at two, well, two no o'clock, wake up for a flight, I'm going to have to go. You need to go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank I'll you. see you Safe before. flight. I'll see you at town meeting. Thank you. Safe flight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so much for all of us on this Beautification piece. Okay. So you want, um, you have a 740. I don't know if you want Tom to do his. Yeah, just set 740 now and just okay. keep going. Yeah. Hi. Oh no, it's those beauty people. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You were Tommy. Of course I was. <laughs> you know what I ran across, Candace? Um, when we were over at the school, you and I, Jim Petro, and we oh, dedicated the sign. I have to. Video of the picture. Oh, I thought you were going to say that. Heard it through the grapevine. Oh, that was what was up. Years ago. Oh, at least. Yeah. Oh, we're getting to so you can get into it. Beautiful. <laughs> no, no. I had that. Yeah, 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 but that's all I got. You want me to bring more paper in my office? Is that so? You, no, you say I got split vision, you give me two of them? We want you to give one to a friend. 
Yes. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're actually not going to take up a lot of time. Um, I wanted to, we wanted to first and foremost invite you and anyone else to help us Saturday. We're doing a townwide cleanup. Um, we're meeting on the front steps at 10. Um, we'll give everybody anything they need and then send them on their way. They, we have routes and people can pick where they want to do it. We just want to get the town cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> we've pretty much gone now to twice a year. We, we were doing it once, but we did one last fall and I'm sure we'll do one this fall. So we just want you to feel welcome. We know that Troy is going to be cleaning up with the daisies and Kathy Lanatra over by the school. Surrounded by beautiful young ladies. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> this so, the school room comes yeah, So no yeah. pressure with resting, no. but <laughs> we just want you to feel welcome. Um, the other thing that um, we, we have these brochures is we really are here. Uh, we know you've seen our article. If you have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. We're not here to give a big presentation on our article which we support more every day that we work on it. But um, we are here to ask you to take a position on it. Oh. Not tonight. You don't have to vote tonight. We're not. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. We're not crazy. <laughs> right. But we are, we are really hopeful that you and Board of Health, and, you know, that our elected officials and leaders will take a position. And it doesn't have to be ours. Uh, clearly, we hope it will be. But, uh, and it's, and it's, if you want to talk about it, any one of our committee would come and talk to any one of you or anyone else to uh, explain some of the things that we found. We um, had a more excellent. <laughs> we had an excellent turnout last night. At, um, um, we showed three videos at the library. We had popcorn. People brought their own containers oh. and their own. Wow. Um, no, that's good. Their own drink containers and had them not. We showed. The first one was li um, living yeah, a month living without month. Pl plastic. The second one was on uh, reducing plastic at the local, local level. level. And the third one was, are you eating plastic for dinner? Right. That was just a five minute video, but it was good. And people were very receptive. So we're out there campaigning and we're trying to spread information. So that's really why we're here. I will tell you a funny story about last mm -hmm. night is we had <laughs> adults and we had some young kids uh, who came with their parents. and. I was trying to share this story about how the plastics don't don't uh, break down; they become microplastics, and they're in the ocean. You know, I was telling that, um, and I said recently we learned that um, there were some divers in the deepest part of the ocean. And I could not think of the name of it, and this little kid in the front row goes, "Marianas Trench." Perfect. I said, That's it. Which actually has been something that that has been an eye opener for all of us in that. Even now, I mean, if you go to the fields, if you go to the school, elementary school, if you probably, if you have grandchildren and, and look at them, they're not using the plastic bottles, they're using reusable bottles. They're, mm -hmm. The kids are ahead of us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's it's really exciting to watch. So that was a I put my bottle away. <laughs> <laughs> I got can. Well, I got can. You know, there was an excellent article on the Globe, two, uh, front page story on the Globe magazine two weeks ago, and it was talking about this. You know, getting a plastic sounds very easy, but it's not as easy as we would like it to be. But baby steps are better than no steps, yes. which is why we're going for just the yeah. bags right now. Yes. So, so I, I'm not here to preach, but I just want to tell you that we would really appreciate it if you take a position as a committee, as a board. Some of the surrounding um, towns, I know Pembroke's already gone to. Uh, Pembroke's, to yeah, and Hampson is, has it on his special yeah. town. Yeah. Has it this year. Question, though, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're right. trying to get rid of the plastic straws, yeah. but we're not getting rid of the plastic cups. Well, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts is getting rid of their styrofoam cups in 2020. Yeah. And actually, that, this is the second time they made that promise. So, Make Massachusetts Beautiful has a, right on their website, they have a oh. countdown clock <laughs> for when <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts is. I mean, they're really starting to hold people, you know, these businesses to the. What is that, the Caribbean Islands where they found the plastic for miles and miles away from the shore, all up on the oh, shoreline? Oh. It's just it's the, the current of flows it right into it. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. And it's about habit. I mean, once you get in the habit of using the reusable bags, like I never, I love oh, my yeah. reusable bags because I can put more in it and it stays more yeah. organized. And I just keep them in my trunk. 
and then yeah. I bring them out, I leave them on a chair. And, and they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I well, use well, And even when I don't not a new bag, trick. I carry stuff out. No. My, my grandmother and I used to do all that stuff with like the bags or yeah. roll the yeah. carriage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go to BJ's, you, ah. <laughs> right. you bring yeah. your own bag. Yeah. A mutual bank donated 100 uh, reusable bags. And I still have, I think, about six yeah, years we last year. Last year. And if people buy reusable bags at Top and Shop, I believe it benefits hops. <laughs> oh, is that oh, just saying? Oh, that's, 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 that's good to know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Two other quick things. Um, one, we want, want to just tell you quickly about our, probably our next big initiative that we're doing is we. Um, Tom left, I think, but but um, he no, Tom, no, he's there. Oh, I'm he just has his glasses on. Answers. He has his glasses on. I have <laughs> okay, Tom has given us a, an inventory now, but um, it seems that there are a number of good-sized planters kicking around in the basement, and uh, like Thousands. like how many? Ten, eighteen inch. 10, 16 inch, and about 5, 14 inch. We just wow, where are they from? They were from years ago. Yeah, they, they've they've accumulated. So, yeah. so They're we're, antiques. We're, 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 we're repurpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we're, we're doing is we're going to start after. We have a lot on yeah. our plate right yes. now. But, but after town meeting, mm -hmm. right after, we're going to um, talk about maybe adopt a planner, mm -hmm. adopting a planner, and getting some of these. Um, well, we, we we think that people can fill them at the town barn with, with dirt and, but you know, if you adopt it, you plant it. And we're trying to get them out, we'll try to get them out into, a, in front of public areas and neighborhoods, if they're safe neighborhoods, I, I you know, I, we don't know yet. We're just, but we're, we're, we're looking to do that. And um, that's probably the next push that we'll have. And then um, there was one other thing. We are going to have rain barrels. On yes, bag. we're it's selling it right yeah. available through the American Rain Barrel Company. Yes, the fellow has done all research for that. Excellent. So at a very reduced price, about sixty-nine dollars. History repeats time. itself. So, so history repeats itself. Exactly. We always have a exactly. rain barrel yeah. in the gardens and stuff to collect the little bit in the city you always have right. the barrels. But the nice thing is that there'll be someone there to show them how they how to use it. And if yeah. they want to buy them, we don't get involved in any of right. our transactions. It's yeah. just That's we, best. but it's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's it's a good deal. So <laughs> and that will be on Saturday? Saturday, Saturday around ten to eleven the, the rain barrel will be out. It will be out in front of oh, town. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just want people but to know. Steps. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was all mm -hmm. uh, that we, I know um excuse me, it was really helpful with Susan's job. Here he is. Oh I didn't even back there. Oh there. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're going to talk about recycling, soft recycling, if you want to say. We're talking about recycling in a couple minutes. Oh, okay. Because I, we have had so much help from, I mean, Steve and Susan have been great, and they're actually going to be, well, you'll, you've probably already seen it, they're the enforcers on our, with the, the enforcement agency. <laughs> but I will also tell you that we've been researching this and talking to other towns, and nobody seems to have a problem with enforcement. Um, we've gone to businesses, and they... <clears throat> the big ones say we will do what the town votes or the town wants, but we don't want to get on any mm -hmm. list. We're yes. going to list them in this, and right. you know. But that's all we want is yeah, to, to, to be, do the right thing. Yeah. So we're really hopeful that there won't be any um, enforcement issue, and, and I don't think we're no, not I, expecting I, I, that yeah, I, if it passes, which we're hopeful. I, I don't think enforcement would be an issue. I don't know. Either. But and I think I heard today that Steve is uh, that they're also helping to accommodate us with the rain barrel transportation when they come in because we have to just get them picked up with or without the rain in it. <laughs> hey, if you want to take one, it's full of water. It's all no yours. No one will stop you. <laughs> so I think that's it. We have. She said a half an inch of rain fills the whole barrel. Yes, sir. That's right. A half an wow. inch of yeah. rain. 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 Continuing flow. Because it goes from the gutters. Wow. Right. Impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah, it is. Mm. It's mm. worth the money. <laughs> right. So I, that's, that's, I think, all that. Put a mesh is. screen over it so the mosquitoes so don't make the nest in it. I'm sorry? I said you got to put a mesh, a mesh yeah, screen well, over it. Yeah, because it comes with it to keep the yeah. bugs out. Yeah, right? keep the bugs out yeah. so the mosquitoes. I, I'm serious. My grandmother came from Mississippi. That's all yeah. they used to do is collect stuff. Like wow. that. Thank you for all your effort. Yeah. Can I have one more thing? Sure. It's just a question. We have a company 
Actually, it's the same company that is maintaining this garden for us. Um, maybe you notice the edge? Yep. Yes, yes, it looks great. Right. Yeah. They're going to plant annuals, but it's grown. And they're very interested in adopting the island at the at the intersection of 58 that would be a wonderful 106. Oh, and God, that'd be they awesome. Talked to they've, been, they've been interested for a couple of years, and I had a long conversation with the lady yesterday, um, and she, I said, the problem is there's no water access there. And she said, we don't care. We just will make it look nice. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll plant things that don't take a lot of water, yeah. and we'll, Succulents or we'll um, you know, and we're not, yeah. she said, that's, what she said to me is, that's like the center. People go by there every day, and it looks thousands awesome. of people, mm -hmm. really, 58 and 106. And she said, it should really have a big sign that says Halifax. And yeah. she said, you know, they'll maintain it and pay that. I mean, what we would do as a beautification committee, we think, is we would have a small sign made saying that they've adopted yes. that island. Mm -hmm. But we don't know if there's a procedure that we need to Follow in terms of My concern mm -hmm. is the sign pollution that happens there from time well, to time. Well, I would think that that would have to be controlled a little. Well, yes. I would think what the board is looking that would be on our property. That would be on our back. We were directed that there's no, there's sign, no sign on that. Nothing on. placed in the ground. That's what I'm getting at. Do they want to adopt it for this season? I think she would. They will start it. It's CMAC services, and okay. and uh, I think they're prepared to start it. If we went down tomorrow and said, yes, do it, well, what do you need to do? I can't do see anything bad um, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Neither can I. has also said they're interested in adopting Ann Island, but we haven't had a process in place. So should we have a process so that people say, no, I want that island? Yeah. What like, we've been doing, we've right. actually been working on, on that for a while, and then we get into other things. And right. Like, oh, but now do you have ideas? There's a pressing, you know, now that there's some group that really wants to do this, what we said at yesterday's meeting is we're going to draft some mm -hmm. expectations yeah. so that, you know, I can't start it and then let it go. Yeah, right, so right. We have to go in and fix it. So so we, we thought that there should be a, I guess that's our question, is right. should we develop a contract, we develop a contract. Or, or should we have expectations that we give to them? I mean... And what's the bidding process? So maybe somebody wants the one that's at 58 and not the one that's at South Street. Well, and that's the thing all is... Of them, so we started that, like, back five, six years ago, so we have to keep that list going, and then remember we were here with the wooden sign yes. idea and yes. all that, and then we never went forward because we didn't have a quorum. Well, yeah. well I would think there's <laughs> got to be something in place to, as to how long they might want to continue maintaining well, I'll tell you the what we have done here, and I think, I think mm -hmm. it's going to work well, is we asked them to commit to two years. Um, and we also sent out for the, a, for the Fitzgerald Garden. We, we sent out a um, uh, request for for quotes. We didn't, you know, make a big deal, but to only local landscapers and mm -hmm. and people locally and we businesses locally. And we got three estimates, mm -hmm. and we met and we invited them to the meeting and we picked one, and that was CMAC and. Um, and part of the reason we, we went with them was because they sent a representative who talked to us, and I haven't been able to check, but mm -hmm. when she came up and looked, she said, oh, we can edge around the side of the building where all those bones yeah. are, and we'll put in some mulch and make that look better, all that's the so same nice. price. That's, that's and, and they're very interested right. in doing that, so, so they're committed for two years. We're having a small sign made that will say that it's made, a wooden sign that, will, that looks nice. And that, that will say that the garden is maintained by them. Uh, and then in two years, we'll see where we're at with them. And maybe, but we didn't want to get into a lot of um, technical. Uh, what happens is if we have to worry, you know, like these people have, have offered for two years to do that island. No one else has come to us. Right. Uh, so my mantra is forgiveness is easier than permission, yeah. so yeah. I'm thinking we go with it, and then if we get complaints... A, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. Yeah. Oh, I, I, Next time, you know, we just we just go forward, and that's my suggestion, but we're here to ask you yours. I, I think you're on the right track there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the conductor is pushing you right along. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll uh, keep you I'm fine with that, but I'm just, I think that it would be easy at some point for you to kind of let people bid on the islands. 
because oh, some that's people. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what so you're saying. So in other words, not going to make them give that one to at the meeting this Monday when they yeah, we'll, yeah. Where, Well, we'll, well, I think the advertisement and the fact that if they would, what they yeah. do do the 58 yeah. and 106 there, yeah. that encourages other groups to might want to come forward because yeah. they, they see it being done. Exactly. And it's advertising for them too at the same time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Really, we can't thank you enough yeah. how active your committee yeah. is. And then maybe we could go pay them for a year or something. Yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll get back to you on that. Um, We're so grateful. I just want to say to you <laughs> that I'm sorry that you're leaving. No. I'm sorry that you're leaving town. I'm sorry that you're leaving the board. I know it's not an easy yeah. job. It's a thankless yeah. job. And that's oh, what I you love get it. big bucks for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it um, will be missed. And you bring a perspective mm -hmm. that no one else can bring. And uh, we will miss you. Thank you so much. Thank it's been such you know, a pleasure. I, I don't understand it. You divorced me. You divorced me. <laughs> it left me. What's the, what, what's the common denominator, Troy? Just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very bitter. Follow me, you both. Pig left him away. I'm okay now. I'm going to mess it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah, thank thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you for your time. You guys are the best. Bye. I have to put in a quote for Caesar because he was absolutely. You want such it for a Caesar? Oh, no. Oh, 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 but is oh he okay. No. Oh, he <laughs> was such a help. Such a help. We let him out every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we take him every once in a while. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so hi, Steve. Hi, Sue. We're going to talk about soft recycling. Soft recycling. <laughs> So we, we can't bring those. We can't bring the glass bottles in because they're not soft. I don't understand. So assume everybody here doesn't know anything. Yes. So start from which would be which is about right. So my name is Courtney Forster. First of all, thank you so much, uh, Chairman and the board and the um, town initiative for being here. I know you guys have long meetings. Um, we all attend live meetings, and it's always a good time, right, um, in the evening. Um, so my name is Courtney. I'm from Waste Zero. Um, we are also currently your community zero trash pack partner. So we work with you yes. on your, your trash pack um, program as well. Um, but another program that we're uh, currently rolling out throughout the state and the region is a program uh, called Central Recycling. And it's a curbside collection of textiles. I guess what we're calling soft recyclables in this situation. Cool. So textiles, basically anything that we're wearing now, our bags, shoes, stuffed animals, curtain drapes, uh, linens, and, and so forth. Um, so we've been partnering with this company called Simple, and they do curbside textiles, as I mentioned, and it's as simple as putting a pink bag that we're using in Massachusetts out on the curb on your collection bay for recycling. So rather than having to like search around town and find the drop-off bin, remember to put it in your car on the right day and you don't forget to take it out on a you know, different day, um, or you know, calling a, a different charity to help come or running to bring a certain place, this is for the folks that just can't be bothered with all of that or aren't currently donating somewhere. 85% um, of textiles are currently being thrown in the trash. Mm. And then they pay you to the community. 85%. Only 15% are currently getting recycled. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right? And so and you're thinking we're all doing a good job, but this month people say, oh, I'll just put in the stuff that I'm wearing now, the nice stuff, it will be reused. We forget about that one sock or the shirt that should have been ever seen in daylight. Anything can be recycled. Uh, whether it's You've reuse, seen it? <laughs> <laughs> whether it's reuse, um, you know, we're going to wear again or resell, or it turns into carpet padding or, or part of insulation. There's always a market for it. So 85% is going in the trash. And so Simple realized this is bad. You need to make it more convenient. Um, what, how can we make that? Hey, let's mirror uh, residents' recycling groups. And so essentially what they're doing is sending out um, Ford Transit vehicles on the town's collection uh, days for recycling and to kind of like yard waste collections or special collections, looking for those bags and picking them up. Um, and it's at no cost to the residents, no cost to the town, and the best part is the town could actually make a rebate on it, so it could just offset collections. It's a penny a pound, so twenty dollars a ton. So not enough for you making money, but it offsets. Yeah. Where does the bags come from? We make the bags, um, and they are sent to the residents free. Um, so there's that's initial. The key. That was yeah, the key. that's yeah, that's about totally free. So actually, I have a couple little things I can give this to you. Um, I have four copies. Um, thank you. And um, here we are. 
and uh, I'm going to okay. email okay. these to you as well. And I have um, three, recycle. <laughs> three <laughs> bag samples. Um, and I can get another one for you. Oh, I'm fine. Um, what, <laughs> what if you're a guy and you want blue? <laughs> We do pink in Massachusetts, and as you can imagine, with a lot of Asian you know, communities, that's a color that nobody is picking for their curbside um, bags. That way, it's clear we can use the standard. Uh, so, what happens in a community is um, a symbol would get the recycling routes in the mailing list, and essentially, what we're doing is sending out that mailer. It would be custom, obviously, that one I think says Wenham or some other town on there. And uh, it would obviously say Halifax on it, and those would be mailed directly to the resident saying, starting whatever date it is, and in that envelope are two bags. They're, um, so they're ready to go. And when residents put their recyclables out in the bag, they will leave a bag plus one. So they left two bags, you get two bags, a third bag, and they'll tie them to the recycling cart, or put them on the bin or whatnot. So you always have a regular, regular supply. And are you picking up weekly, or is it a one? We, are you you recycle weekly. So is that oh, okay. Weekly. All right. Yeah. So it's, that's what matches the, the recycling routes. Um, and it, some communities have wanted, uh, we're doing this in 30 communities throughout the state, um, and the simple works in uh, Texas, Michigan, Minnesota. Um, we're about to start Atlanta, and we're also in Connecticut as well. Um, and we uh, would provide the signage and the bags come directly, and we can also give we a roll. the recycling center. So if people are like, oh, I need yeah. extra. They clean up and they need yeah. extra bags. But the other thing that's really convenient is because they're in town every day, even if it's not their recycling route, if they end up calling the 1-800 number to say, I'm cleaning on my attic, or I just went into my basement, how many bags do you need? They'll probably drop them off that day, if not the next day. So they're always ready, because they want to make that convenient uh, for folks. Technically, they would pick up a black bag with their label, but we just don't want to get into confusion. We'd rather have folks use the, the identified bag, so there's no confusion. Clearly, in a page you go community, no one's picking up a black bag anyways. Um, but uh, in some cases that aren't page you throw, we don't want that to accidentally no. go in the wrong No, place. I think a color is good. Yeah. And we have blue for yes, our, yeah, so yeah. pink. Yeah, you have the blue. Yeah. You already have, the blue is trash, and then this is. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I have two bags uh, ready to go, actually. I have one in my trunk. I have one in my trunk. I've been driving around with it for a few see, days. See, that's what happens. That's totally what yeah. happens. So, um, yeah, so we basically, what we're kind of looking to see if the town wants to sign up. Uh, again, there's no uh, fee for that. Um, there is a sample agreement, which um, I have one copy here. I can email it to you. Yeah, sure. you have one. Um, so I can leave them with you folks and also make sure I send it via email. Um, but this is their sample agreement that basically just says um, they're going to do what they say they're going to do, which is pay you a penny a pound and pick up on your recycling route. And the town agrees not to find another curbside collector of recycling because they don't want. They're not making this effort to compete right. with somebody. Okay. I guess my question is: Does the money go into your account? I mean, That's a recycling good. account. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it also reduces our tonnage, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, based on some it's estimates. It's convenient, it's yeah. just, you know, you can't be. And you don't, if there's a handling, you don't have to handle it either because we do right. have yeah. one. And if people still want to donate to Correct. their places, then they can still And we found that. that there's been no, it's most anecdotal because people don't have good records of donation bins and whatnot. Uh, but anecdotally, we're seeing, sometimes we see an increase in donations because people are like, oh yeah, I want, I'll just use this pink bag as a vehicle to my charity or whatnot. Um, or like, you know, I should bring it somewhere or whatever it is. But people who are already donating are going to continue to do that because they believe it, they want, to, they get the tax rebate, whatever it is. Um, but this is for that 85% of textiles that is not making I can't believe it's that high. I know. And um, in Massachusetts, because I'm, you guys host uh, one of the Macs here um, in your offices, but um, the Macs and DEP has done a great job statewide telling people about textiles. So actually, Massachusetts is the highest performing state for Simple. It's a so that's the community that we partner with, Way Zero, um, for this collection. And they say when they come in here, even the lowest performing uh, city is better than some of the higher performing other states, just because people are want they're looking for this. You know, we have a lot of patient throw programs. Residents have been trained to put those things in the right spot. So as soon as they have that option, um, it's really great. So in the spreadsheet, there's a little breakdown of potential, uh, slide four, I believe, and uh, based on your residence and households and 10 pounds a year, um, that's about 16 tons that we can pull out, which I don't know if your collection is still 109 per ton. 
Um, no, we're no, we're down to um, 87. Okay. We're going up to bits, so that's all. It's a little bit different, anyways. But based on an approximate avoided disposal cost, we're looking at a projected revenue and savings about two thousand dollars a year. So not giant numbers, but something that can just offset, um, you know, used by <coughs> containers or education materials. But it just takes it out of the trash, which is yeah. tonnage numbers are important. Very well presented. Awesome. Oh, and you are supporting this program. So you haven't yeah. done you haven't done this before. I, I haven't done this before a few times. I don't see a downside. Do yeah. I don't either. Yeah, it's been really well received. You no cost. They're gonna pay us to take the that. stuff away. You know, yeah. we don't have to, you don't have to you handle it. you don't have to handle it. Mm -hmm. Well yeah you are. You 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 overseeing yeah, you know, it to make sure it's done properly. <laughs> <laughs> and they handle any uh, go backs usually within that day, if not the next day, if it's after a certain hour. Residents would call them directly and they'd come back, even if they said, I swear it was out by 7. So, so, if, I, so if I call them up and paint my dumpster pink, <laughs> they'll take that too, right? Maybe not. They might think that's a little skeptical there. I know Charlie had a few questions. Well, I guess one of my biggest concern simply is, and I guess I didn't realize we were going to buy our bags, was a worry that people would put stuff in the bag that was not Paris on your list. Right. And so what happens then? They have, so Simple has again, been doing this, they're doing this in 30 communities, it's two years. Um, uh, Brookline started about two years ago. And uh, they have, Simple has not seen enough of contamination that's made it a problem. Like, in their people aren't putting, I think that there's an accidental or more of a, this shouldn't be here, it's meant to be here. Um, but where they're not seeing enough, because they're only making money when they collect good stuff and can sell it. So if they were seeing a lot of contamination, they would not mm -hmm. still want to be switching moving forward in Massachusetts. So they're not seeing contamination to make it stop. Awesome. And the simple answer is, if they did, they'd stop. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. You probably would indicate that we need to do more education or outreach as well, if that was part of it. Well, thank you for your efforts to find this young lady who's doing the work. Well, she uh, came to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but much you, you were receptive. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I was receptive. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> Would you like us to make a decision tonight, or do you want to? Do you feel comfortable making a decision, or would you like to? I, think I would move it. Do we, we, we try to remember the order of things. I know. I believe we had Larry review it, correct? I believe we did. Yes. Okay, I'll go back. And make, so we'll do. It. The board can make a decision tonight. I'll make sure that we had that we had a town council review it and sure. approve it, and then bring it to the board for signature. And they don't have to do it at the next meeting. They can do it in between. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You know, it's all coming back to me, and I'm 90% yeah, yeah, we'll check. Review, I guess. So what we'll do is we'll make the motion to include the approval from town council of the actual agreement. Okay. So moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Thank you so much. Thank you. But just that we confirm it, uh, once we have a signed agreement, we can implement any time after 90 days. Okay. And we work with them to find the exact date. I'm going to give you this back so you can recycle okay. it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> or you can use it when it's done. Then all the bags are standard. So they don't do that at all? I want to film mine. I don't know if they do it. Because you guys didn't see it. Excellent. Well, thank you all for thank your time. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. What are you going to do tomorrow? Good job, Bruce. See you. Hey Steve, thank you again for all your help with cops. You were like a rock star. Thank you so much. I know you were so helpful during the build. So, actually, I should take the time to thank all of the. I want to take the time to thank all of the residents who participated in the um, building of Hops, and we're not open yet. We'll be open within the next couple of weeks, but we really want to take the time and really thank the people that not only the the this, this fabulous nine that was part of it from the from the whole process, um, but to the people. Steve was there. You know, it was just so helpful. I know the rain was pretty tough, but people were still you're, working. In the you're the committee. I know the highway department employees were there yes. earlier in the week. Steve was there on, uh, during the weekend. Alan Diaz yeah. was there yeah. with his equipment. I mean, we had so many wonderful people the come. People brought in wheelbarrows. They brought in their tools. You know, and everybody from you know getting the refreshments to just moving mulch. the wood chip, the mulch and everything around yep. with a bunch of rakes. Yep. Everything helped. Yep. It was great. So anyway, okay. It is 8 o'clock. Well, it's a little, a little after eight, and we are here to talk about Field Stone Farms. Before we get into that, I did notice what was on for 8.30, and I thought that gentleman with his family, 
and looked like a much shorter yes. scheduling than us. So we'd be happy to wait. Would you? Yes. Oh, is that okay? Is everybody here? For the Bunker Rose? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Phil, I was thinking about that earlier. So we get all the good looking people here. Yeah. There's no ugly. So, Michael, why don't you come forward? And the chief. Hi, how are you? Good. We have one. Oh. Thank you so much, though. Yes, and I see that you. Okay, well, we'll let the chief do an introduction, then we. Can talk. So I'm here this evening uh, to uh, request uh, consideration for uh, Michael. Um, Try this again. Bunker Bunker whiskey. No, Bunkeru. Bunkerewski. Bunkerewski. As an appointment for a special police officer, uh, he's 20 years old. He's a resident of 92 Pond Street in Halifax. He's been a lifelong resident of town. He's very familiar with the community, and he wish that he wishes to protect and serve. Um, he's uh, attended local schools. He's a 20, 2010 graduate of Silver Lake Regional High School. Mm -hmm. 2014 graduate of Bridgewater State University with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. He is very motivated and committed to serve our community. Um, some of his experience in law enforcement includes the uh, grad graduation from uh, the Reserve Intimate Academy in 2015. He then worked, and he's currently working as a special police officer for the town of Hull since 2016. Wow, I'm moving uh, to Hull. Yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, You're disqualified. <laughs> in his duties as a Hull officer, uh, I'd like to bring attention to the board to an incident uh, where he received an award from the yes. uh, Hull Police Department yes. for going into a, bur a burning building and um, uh, removing a uh, pie that was in the building, uh, saving their lives. Um, it's the type of courage that, and dedication that you know, we're trying to foster here in Halifax. Um, he also works as a line cook at uh, Red Robin since 2012. Did so you I, bring me a stack of onion so rings? <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah, he has a certification in cobweb, which is a bicycle, a bicycle, yes. oh, a bicycle school. school. Yeah. First aid CPR, and his license to carry. Um, we, had, we interviewed Michael uh, last week, myself and a couple of the sergeants. Very impressed with his responses. Uh, he uh, seems very motivated, very dedicated. Uh, I think uh, he'll be a great uh, you know, addition to the police department. Excellent. Awesome. Great. Do you have Excellent. any questions? Or? What is pretty much covered everything here. That yeah. didn't leave a whole lot of room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just one question. Fair, firm, and consistent. What does that mean to you? Fair, firm, and consistent. Uh, always be fair in my judgment. Uh, definitely staying consistent in my judgment. Um, but also being firm um, to not let people go just because of the way, just because they're being nice, um, say a tra traffic citation. Um, not always the, the apology from them is going to, you know, say they drive through a crosswalk, someone's crossing the road, you know, you got to hold people accountable for their actions. Yeah. yeah. So, how do you deal with stress? I go to the gym. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Definitely helps. Uh, Did you say you beat up on gym or you go to the gym? <laughs> no, I go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> go to the gym. <laughs> 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 You've got a very strong family behind me as well. Yes. A yes. supportive family, friends. Yes. Uh, so, take a little stress off. I've known him since he was young, so my son, I think my son's a year older than he, and I've known his mom for many years, but um, what's your favorite thing, because I know that you've been a police officer, what's your favorite thing about being a police officer? Definitely the interactions. Um, we see a lot of people on a, a different wide range of people. Um, I've, always, I've always loved this community. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely never had a problem here. So I look forward to protecting and serving you. Well, I think for somebody so young, you're such a hero just by you. your daily activities as being a police officer and saving somebody is just unbelievable. But I've always known you to be a good boy. A good boy. <laughs> what? I, I like the fact you're local and, and you know the community, you know the residents, you know the type of mentality that's in the town. And, and just logistically know the town, which is huge all by itself. 
Well, and it, it's nice to see young people that you know represent the goodness of our future. So, yeah, and, and I appreciate. Yeah. And we have tremendous respect for our chief and the sergeants and their. Um, nothing but good things. So. So grateful so that he is. Nicely done, Chief. And I like I like, the, I like the answers. <laughs> the, the last thing I'm going to say to you, having been a cop myself, is don't internalize other people's problems. Try to help them with their problems if you can, but if you can't, let it go. So you're going to be a a, a, a PI, special. a special, a special here, He's and are you going to stay on in Hall? I hope to. Yeah. No, I think there's enough work. It all works out. He took the exam. Uh, oh, you took in March? Ago. Okay, yeah. perfect. So hopefully, yes. Um, He'll be on the list. Because yeah. that new list yeah. will, yeah. will be certified yeah. sometime, yeah. I believe, in September. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yes. So, so you told him what my address was, not to come here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I will entertain a motion to appoint Michael Bonkaruski to the um, Halifax. Police Department as a special police officer. Yeah, let me pronounce it Bonkaruski. Bonkaruski. Bunk. It's almost B U N K A, right? But it's not spelled that way. It's Bunk. I E W is two O's. Yes. 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 You want to move that? or? I, I, I would wholeheartedly move that we put Mr. Bonkaruski on as a special police officer for the town of Halifax. I would like to enthusiastically second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Welcome to Thank the town. Thank you. Thank you. Employment. Thank you. And hopefully we won't have too many fires that you can run into. Really, congratulations. Thank so you. proud of you. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Chief. I'll see you Thank on May 18th. You're making our job Thank easy. Sure with the family. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. May I? I, know, you know. I always like to do the so, photos with yeah, the family. It's oh, one of the duties. If you don't so. mind. No, oh, could you do a photo? Oh, okay. Sorry, we'll have to make you guys move again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forget to get the flowers in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Come on, two. Come on. Come on. Share this moment. All right. All right. I'm going to take a cup. This is very exciting. It is. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you guys, you guys take a picture now. Dude, mommy did. Yeah. Right. It's one of our. It's a small one. <laughs> I'll, I'll just email them the pictures after. Right, yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Really. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. So exciting. I didn't think you would still be. Oh, yes. I'm so pleased. Thank you very much. How much oh, did you get? I think that was your fault. I told you that. That's true. Just when I was in the water. Yeah. Now he's got to stop in and see. You have to get sworn in. Um, Pam will do the card yeah. and then yeah. copy and touch, and you'll have to get sworn in by the town clerk, and then you can go right okay. up the check. Yeah. And right. you'll need to fill out paperwork with the assistant treasurer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank
<laughs> and Phil. <laughs> because she's not going to throw anything at you anymore. Well, That's we spent, like, we've been together at, like, four in the morning, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. but not just for a town business. No, 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 when I was on my, my um, dog duty. Dog watch. My dog watch at four in the morning. My husband like, where are you going? I'm like, dog duty. <laughs> anyway, dog duty, you get it. Forget that. Yeah. All right, we are here to talk about, so this is the official hearing. We notified all of the abutters to see if there was any issues, and I don't know that there's anybody here. Okay, all right, awesome. And what was the feedback that you received? Okay. All right, Charlie? Well, then I guess it's left for the board to discuss among themselves where we would like to go in terms of the request for the changes in the agreement. I mean, the major things are um, bumping the number of days up to 38, bumping the number of multi-day shows from 7 to 8, and then also adding a provision that this could be revisited without an actual going to court to change the consent agreement in the future after this one's done. Excuse me, sir. Are you here for the Fieldstone Farm? Yes, I'm here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> we'll be calling on you if you have any feedback that you would like to share. Okay. Do you have anything that you want to offer? For I don't know what's going on, but uh, I, I live at 7 Plymouth Street right mm -hmm. next to us. So to go back, or as I just mentioned, the major changes in the proposed consent agreement are to increase the number of maximum show days from 30 to 38, increase the number of possible multi-day shows from 7 to 8, and then also that Ms. Klaus will be able to come back to the board in the future to ask for additional days or additional multi-day shows without having to go to court to get the consent agreement again amended. I love the notes. Who wrote the notes? Was it you? This this is this is about the highway contract. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading the notes and I'm like, what the they, heck? They don't apply. Is that okay. what they are Okay. Well, you're oh, here it is. Have a couple notes from here. All right. right. Yeah, the okay. Jeez, I had the wrong one on top, and I was just looking at the written notes. I'm like, boy, you're being pretty assertive. <laughs> okay. Let's go through. Do we have to go? We have to go through all of it. Well, I, I don't think we should start at the beginning. I think we should just focus because a lot of the change, a lot of the, the majority of the change is actually proposed by your council, and I think so yes. then we have you have some issues. Some issues with. Okay. But I think if we want to maybe start with what the crux of sure is, and that's and that's what our request was. The sure. Changes. So tell us which so, one we would like to start with. So it started out this year for the the, the brief history, which. Um, Mr. Clausen was approached by New England Dressage about yes. hosting a show for them. I believe he used to do a show for them in the past. He used to host a show in the past. Um, and he no longer does his April show. He added another show in or it was August. In, in, in May. Okay. He added another show in May. Um, and probably was the, the, the turf wasn't always ready in April. Um, and, so, and when he did with, those cha with that change, and because the May is a longer show, and then with New England Dressage wanting to come in. Before New England Dressage, he, he was one day off. And then with New England Dressage, um, he is, they have a two day show. Mm -hmm. So that's what the original request for th three, three days. But I thought it was also the, the big show in August needed an additional that's, day. Right, that's one day. That's the one day. So there's okay. a one day show after that. On top of the New England Dershaw. Correct. So okay. we ended, so we got rid of the April show. Yes. Added the May show. Perfect. And then he ended up with needing three days to cover New England dressage. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one day, and then that one day. And okay. when he, the night of the snowstorm, I believe, is when I couldn't be here, it was suggested to him that if there are additional days that he foresees now, Put them out there and let's talk about that now mm -hmm. and that's where the change went from three to eight three to eight three to eight it was three yeah, so they wanted 32 days originally right 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 so th what that what that reality would mean would be the shows the industry the, um, the events are now tending to be a week-long show the five days so the three days is to is to address new england dressage and then that day he would need in august and then, because it was suggested to you know, ask now for he only foresees, you know, future can always change, and that's why we want to be able to come back future. But he foresees right now, not anticipating more than one more week long show. And that would be the reason why there's one additional multi day show. 
because he didn't need that for his for what he was doing before, and then the five days to accomplish that. And you can correct me if I misspeak, but based upon the season here and the um, the turf and, and the uh, and the fields, he doesn't anticipate really more than that because. Um, like sports, like all sports fields, they need time to rest and recover, mm -hmm. um, just like the athletes do. I didn't know that until I started following the town building parks. Yeah, you know, but there's not a lot of grass in your rings, right? Not in the rings, but the Grand Prix field. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, so, so, okay. Which is kind of what the highlight of the whole show is the Grand Prix field. Okay. We have those excess rings, the warm yes. rings, and stuff like that. Yes. Um, and I don't anticipate even the five days. We have no plans for the additional five day right at this moment. And I don't see it in, even next year, I don't see it. So you just want to have it in there so that you don't have to keep Correct. coming back? Right. Okay. Part of the reason that is you, people only, of course, people only want to go to the same place so many times a year. They want to travel around the country. That's part of the fun of the world. Right. Right. The only thing I could foresee is like if New England Dressage wanted to do something else again. Um, if it went well for them next year, if they wanted to do a spring and fall show. Or how about like the August show, that big one? Do you see them? It's, it's I know they're adding a day. Days. It is. Yeah. Okay. And we wouldn't do any more than that. Um, it's uh, yeah, two weeks is, is enough. Okay. It's enough for me and enough for the people. Okay. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't anticipate that at that right now at all. I mean, just have no idea. It would ever change. Right. I don't think it would. Right. Um, <clears throat> Great. So you were going to talk about the things that you didn't like about the agreement. Well. What I, what I noticed overall was there was, um, so the majority of the language starts in 1993 and, all, and it carried through. Then we had the revision where we, um, we, we added a vocal language. Uh, there was a, a bunch of language was added and we, with regard to uh, the, the safety issues, the, um, yes. the board, all that. Yes. And, and that was added when we revised the into, agreement yeah, two right. years ago. Yeah, yes. 2017. Yes. Ended. And one thing that that agreement didn't have was any local town enforcement provision. Um, so any issues were, were in court. Um, so we added a, a fining process. A, a lot of, yeah, that was part escalating. Yes. We added a process for local enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually then kept. Mr. Clawson's enforcement from the original, which he would have to go to court. Right. So, one of the, one of the major changes is Attorney Mayo presented this when he sent it to me. He removed Mr. Clawson's ability to enforce this agreement. He deleted that. Um, so that's so, so that, that's that's a big issue because he left everything for the town and deleted Mr. Clawson's ability um, to have any enforcement. Well, he and what you're saying is he can't really do that because it's by by court that well, Mr. Clawson retains his. Right. Right. Well, we have a judgment, and mo and what it, the language you deleted. My view of it, it's basically reciting what the process is, so we all understand what the process is, because this will be a court judgment. Um, it's enforced in court through contempt proceedings, uh, with the exception of the town has administrative that has the, their um, local enforcement yes. first to avoid that. So that was the language at the end. Some of the other language throughout was basically deletions of the 1993 language that's been carrying through. So I don't know, I don't, and it didn't come with any comment to me, so I don't know what any of the rationale for the board's suggestion. Did you was. correspond with Larry at all about it? Um, I didn't, I, I didn't know that would be appropriate because I think it's, you guys, I presume you guys had discussions, I would presume you guys had discussions with them um, and then that for the draft to be sent to me. I don't no, know this was a review by Larry. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if he provided you guys commentary. What, what, what I would recommend is you correspond with Larry if there are concerns about the changes he's made. For the wording, for yeah. those. Well, my start is why. I mean, he was pretty consistent throughout. To well, right. he, well, he, there was one of the, the original premises of the agreement is what the, Mr. Clausen's and the town's understanding of, of as to what can be used on the property. Um, that remained as in 2017, so from my perspective, um, the town has now changed what they believe the use of the property can be, and that's where the, um, I think on the first page, yeah, it says, you know, he, he basically said the town, he deleted the town saying that the conduct of the horse shows is permitted. Um, 
And that language was back to 93. Okay, so as Charlie said, I think that perhaps it might be helpful for you to have a conversation with Larry about that specifically, but what we can talk about is mm -hmm. the extra days, mm -hmm. because... That would, be the main, that would be the main thing. Yes, and then the rest can be sort of tweaked out. So um, I would offer, I would like to put it out. Do you have any comments about the additional four states? Uh, or? I only have two concerns. Sure. Uh, the PA speakers, mm -hmm. it kind of sounds like it came out when you said on your back porch, uh, on the shows. Uh, and <coughs> I have people coming down my driveway thinking it's your driveway, which I don't understand because your driveway's a lot better. Look at mine. <laughs> a lot nicer. Uh, so, but I mean, it, it's like constantly come down. Do they? Still? Yeah, I, I don't know why. Like I said, I'm, I mean, maybe this signage. Um, sometimes you have, um, only because I've spent time there doing my research on other issues, um, there aren't like balloons or something that, but most horse people should know where it is that typically go there, right. but I could, you know, I could see somebody just kind of thinking that's where the parking is and that's where the horses go, right. that perhaps there's another <coughs> entrance, so I don't know if there's a way that we can yeah, yeah, they have, they should do something. define that. That was... That was mentioned at one of our past hearings, so that is the plan for this the season to um, to draw the focus. Are you going to put a bit more, better signage out there, or right. are you going to have yeah. somebody out there guiding them through? Yeah. And I know you're the Flags closest neighbor. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're the I closest mean, neighbor for sure. Yeah, the history of my the previous land yes. owner. Yes, yes. Trying to meet you. <laughs> oh, awesome! It's very nice to meet you. Oh, so now I, I know what house it is. Welcome to Halifax. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. Same with the dogs. No more Jeremy Shepherd said. <laughs> that was my. That's oh, correct. Oh please. Yeah. Been yeah. Yeah. The PA. We forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I brought it back. <laughs> so you definitely can hear the PA system, and yeah, I. Yeah. Okay. I was going to ask that there is a new PA system. I don't yeah, know, but this, this is right next door. I don't know how you're doing that. He's actually working on it as we. I mean, he's here for four days. I hired yes. a professional from Pennsylvania that just does horse shows, mm -hmm. and uh, he's spending a lot of money to redirect. You won't know how it sounds for a couple of days, but yeah, I think it will be challenging though because that is like, I'm, I'm right literally there, it's almost yeah. the same backyard, right? right? Yeah, like yeah. you're right there, and I know you've got the pool there. But so. uh, a friend of mine who lives in. Uh, Punta on the other side of you. Mm -hmm. He says he can hear it. Well, I know that they had worked on yeah. a PA well, system, yeah. and I know that um, it's an English voice, right? Yeah, we have one of the English voice. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, we are working on it as we speak. The guys have yeah. been here for two days now, and uh, it's one, the PA system is, a, is one of my pet peeves because I don't want to hear it either. <laughs> so it's, it's, it needs to be clear but not loud you know, okay. for, for us to hear on the showgrounds. But when it gets up to my house, it's loud. And I'm as close as probably you are. I think, yeah, you, I already have a few more trees blocking you. I was going to say, yeah, he, you know, he's got the berm, but yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. We don't have anything directed in your direction, but um, if it is a problem, come to me and we'll. We'll adjust. We'll try to adjust. I, 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 I've been trying each other. <laughs> we did see good. once with the water last year, March, we, the we, March second storm. Then we came over. You needed to borrow some water for the horses. Oh, that wasn't me. That oh, wasn't you. No, no. I have horses now, but uh, that, that was probably uh, previous owner. Hmm? I, they were boarding at the time. They're not there anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. they're not there anymore. When, when did the new PA go? <laughs> is, is this the first year? Well, the, uh, the no, speakers went in, game. but I didn't have a professional to actually set it up. Yeah, they knew I think what he was doing. They needed to be tuned. I had a lot. There was a lot of professionals locally, but none of them knew the outdoor facilities. So the intent of this one is, I think, more speakers to have lower volume. So you know, as far as whereas before, it's not the booming, got to carry the noise all the way around. Okay, so what you, so what you're going to have is because you have a couple of different rings going at once, then you'll have. But I always just heard one. Announcer. announcer. Are they watching all of the? It's usually three announcers. Oh, I only three. heard one voice. Um, some of them are softer than others. And okay. Louder. All right. So sometimes they get to turn it up by the English gentleman is quite loud. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The English voice is yes. very loud. Yeah. He's usually back in the derby field. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it is a priority of mine to the speakers and the sound. Yeah. Spending a lot of money this week on this one guy just to get it correct. Okay. Not, not speaking of what I've spent over the years, but I just haven't had the right person in there to direct the sound. And, 
make it sound so it's, you don't have to have a blare, you know, so it sounds good. And I know you used to have a gate. I'm sorry? You used to have a gate at the top of your... I still do, but... Uh, and you just pushed a button in it. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's still there, but people tend to push it open with their cars. So. Really? Yeah. So oh, Mama Mia, that's, that's terrible. I, it's actually broken. I, I, I've had people say <laughs> same thing. They pull in. Yeah, they just... Coming into your place, they come into my place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, okay. Problem delivery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pizza. <laughs> See how they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other than that, do you have any other no, issues? I, I love Osa so Okay. It's great to see your shows. Perfect. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Does anybody have any um, comments or concerns about the additional dates? You know, based on the uh, fact that nobody's here to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, complain about it, I can't see any reason not to go. Let's put the extra days. Troy? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> and you know that you can always, if you have a problem, come call me up here at any time. And I'll address whatever we can if I can. You know, no, we know. We know. We and we appreciate that. So so we can have the sensor implanted in your left shoulder sure. so we, we know where you are at all times. Right. We have to hire Kim as an outside vendor to yes. down and listen to the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be my new job. <laughs> I don't have any I don't have any major issues as long as the, the, the my major concern is the neighbors and the community it's, it, at large that it doesn't cause any major issues, mm -hmm. any problems going through. That's what my concern is. And so if if you're addressing quote the speaker's situation now are they going to have i knew in hollywood they have funnels that funnels the noise in a certain direction what's he putting up well the speakers are there he's just tuning it and uh and we have a couple different layers of speakers and he's just directing it in different and more towards the ground and so it's not blaring throughout the whole park. Right. Sort of fine tuning like each room. You right. know, if it was, right. Yeah, speakers in every room are fine tuning each room. Well I'll second I'll second the motion. Then. Did you make the motion that to do so we'll approve the additional dates, but we will still work on the language of so we're not approving the, the no, contract as a whole. Yeah. But we'll approve for this year until we can work out because we're gonna have to work out the language. Mm -hmm. so, um, the additional so from my understanding, the the dates, the increase in the dates to thirty eight. To thirty eight. Yes. And then eight on the um, shows. That's yes. approved yep. by the board. Yes. Yes. Well we're gonna vote it right I, in a I, second. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's Phil, the come motion. On. Phil, send motion. it down, Phil. Yes. <laughs> we can and take, then, take it one at a time. Um, work out the details of yes. I'll reach out to attorney Mayo about it. And work out and then we right. can if you can work that out, then we can all sign the agreement. Yeah. Um, but Tom, you're making the motion yes. for okay, and then Troy, you're seconding it. Yep. Okay. Just All those, for the days. For the days, and we'll work on the language. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. When's the next meeting? Um, the next regular meeting won't be until May 28th because we have five. We're in a five Tuesday April. Then the next regular meeting would be on the 14th, but that's town meeting, and we're not going to do regular business then. So the next regular meeting after that's the 28th. But we right. are meeting, like, we if We're going to we're meet meeting. on May 7th, but that's an irregular meeting. Yes. And we may not be doing regular business. It's up to the board. Okay. And then at some point we have to do a meeting for the town. Well, warrant. I expect that you're yeah. going to be discussing the warrant on May 7th. Okay. Yeah. All right. Under, I reckon I've been involved in small towns and town meeting. I wouldn't think, was not thinking until afterwards. So should we, we put this on for the 28th? Be, well, let's wait to see what you and Larry have worked out. Yeah, then we can. I mean, we've got we've got a, we've got five weeks between now. Because so. maybe we can work you know, it out as we get if we get closer. And, you know, you both have signed off now. Send it back to the board, and they say, okay, fine. I mean, I, we may not even need to meet. Uh, right. Yeah. So do you, okay. So maybe we should revise. The, 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 the motion. Well, no, you're no, fine. No, we're going to keep that. I would love to wrap saying, it up. What I'm simply probably. saying is that it may not be necessary for them to have to come in to see you vote, is what I'm yes. saying. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because between now and then, if he communicates with Larry and then Larry communicates with us what his, what, what his reasoning was, that makes good of the time. So if you could give Larry a call tomorrow and get it going, that maybe we can wrap it up. Yep, yeah. Friday, Thursday. 
Okay. Right. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Troy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I don't want to see you crossing the top of the shop line again. It wasn't me. I know. It's very sad. I miss everybody. I know. Thank you so much. Good luck. Best of luck. Oh, thank you, Phil. Thank you. It's been fun. I was about to say, with the grandkids and everything, it's just. It's past our bedtime. Yeah. I understand you're adopted. Yeah. Yeah. All three of them. Should I congratulate you? Oh, yeah. Congratulate them. Okay, go on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so we, here we are. Let's we continue the revocation here yes. into today. Yes. Um, Dave's Automotive ha did make a payment earlier this week, so they're caught up on their property taxes. They're not, they still have a substantial amount of money left for the motor vehicle excise. So, um, Do you know how much that is, Joe? I don't have the amount, no. It's like 27 or 8. Oh, I'm cleaning it up. I'm chipping yeah. away. Yeah. I've chipped a lot. Yes, you have. I know, it's and we love the effort. I know. And, and I know. We, we apologize for having to do it fair and fair. Yeah, just no, to it's just been, I like this, it's been crazy. Yeah. So, so now the adoption is over. And I'm just trying to simplify my life. We've liquidated a lot of stuff. So we're just, I want to keep going in that direction, then I need my municipal license to do it. Yeah, so we have a bunch of stuff. So. And we're getting ready to open the gas station because the adoption is final. So now I have all the kids. I just changed them all to a same daycare in Cabra, so I'm going to save 50 hours of travel time a month. So that's huge. I'm just, isn't that huge? That's huge. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. I love the magic. Yeah. God bless you for taking on that yeah. responsibility. I know. Yeah. What are you going to do? Someone takes a gun to my head sometimes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Don't brother did the same thing. Don't do it. Honestly, Steve's home with the kids Steph, right don't now, and I think it's. I'm just going to say. You're going to break. Went to like 12. I was just going to say, do you want to stay? Go for a cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just say, you can say to the end, and we'll just say that we just kept you, and yeah, we, we yeah, really yeah. were grilling you. Yeah, we were grilling you. Yeah, based like on a the steak. information we just yeah. received, what I would we recommend. Out, is, okay, Charlie, let's get back to business. What I would recommend is the board rescind its revocation, yes. but continue the hearing until May twenty eighth at seven forty. That, yes. That's all right. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I have to do May first. I'll move it. Sim it down, Steph. We got to go to vote it. All right. So move. A second. All those in favor. Hi. Awesome. Oh, thank you. You're the best. I'll see you on the 28th. 28th. Best of luck. I won't be here. When's your last 28th? Time? The 18th. 740. I wish you the very best. Thank you so, so much. Fun. Yes. You did? I saw the beautiful. Thank you. I have the money I buy. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. And I'll miss everybody. Boy. Is he from home? No? no, he he is from Halifax, but he also works in Hull. Oh, so he'll protect you now. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> she, she won't. I hope I don't need protection. <laughs> the Hull, you say? You never know. You never know. Yeah. Well, right? I'm kind of so, new to this the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry yeah. about the hat yeah. and the overcoat. I'm in my pajamas, actually. Hey, and that's more information we love you. you know. <laughs> we love you. Best of luck, really. All right. It's all good. Best and I'll pick up some trash, okay? Yes. Thank okay, you, guys. staff. I wish you the best. Thank you, yeah. you too. Good luck. Take care. What a nice lady. I'm glad she's. It's awesome. Okay. Is that? Oh no, we have to start from the beginning. We oh, Charlie. We have two more hours of meeting. Okay. Yeah. We don't have two hours. We can get through it pretty quickly. But. Oh my um, gosh. Okay, <laughs> you are so funny. So um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the selectman minutes for um, the regular session for February 26th and the regular session from March 12th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Tom, take it or take it take it away. Okay. <clears throat> I move to affirm approval of the following warrants and commitments. My Payroll warrant me. number 92 for $369,514.69. Vendor warrant number 93 for $221,356.99. Withholding warrant number 94 for $135,724.51. Ambulance commitment from 4119 to 4719 for $39,607.58. Ambulance commitment from 4819 to 4419 for $56,069.29. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, oh yeah, you're sure. right. <laughs> It's okay. We got millions, we got the air, we got the AIF. <laughs> <laughs> I move to approve the following warrant. Vendor warrant number 95 for $296,287.55. Second. I move all those, to 
All those in favor? All right. I'm new at this. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think my battery's running out. <laughs> I move to approve payment of the selectmen bills dated April 23, 2019. <laughs> National Grid and NG Resources combined for $1,216.32. Express Newspapers for $29.25. Matthew Bender and Company for $142.43, and that's it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Charlie, let's go. So, um, the Elementary School Fire Suppression Project, we have an organization meeting on May 2nd at 9 a.m. in the Selectance Meeting Room. Do you think that the owner of that lovely construction company will be there? Yes. Well, somebody will be there. Okay. I don't know about the owner, but okay. somebody will be there. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. We're talking about the fire suppression company. Now. Oh, it's the fire suppression. Well, we're also, no, it's the we're window. Also, about the windows. We're, we're going to do both. We're, okay. We're moving. We, we, yeah. we're going to, you know, it's going to be May, and, the, and a few days after that, we're supposed to be up and running. Yes. So we're meeting with everybody about the fire suppression project. Yes. We also will meet about the windows door siding project with the hope Next. that yes. the storm, that the um, punch list will be completed. We got, uh, I'm hoping, a final one yes, last Martin. week. Yes. So we'll it's getting see. closer. Yes. Marty right. is working on yeah. it. Marty's okay. been doing an outstanding yes. job. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he really has. So, um, okay. Both, oh, so, um, Aldana Road. Yes. Um, on Fisheries and Wildlife, if that parcel, if we're to try and sell that to the Fisheries and Wildlife, we're going to need to purchase the county's interest because it was for whatever reason when the deed was done it was when the deed was done right the yes. deed was done. And this yeah. is the 2ed um it said town of halifax and the inhabitants of plymouth county shut up are they going to take us for some of that money? yes that is not right Get that Tom O'Brien right in here. Yes. So the Joe? state still isn't going to come through with the money. Joe, okay. no, so, so, when Joe, so Joe had talked to Frank Basler, who was the county executive. Oh, Frank Basler, yeah. yeah. Who said, nope, we're not going to give it away. Frank Basler? Yeah. Yeah, I talked to Frank. I like him. He used to serve on the finance committee for the uh, town of Kingston many years ago. So what Joe has said is that the state has no interest in taking half of the interest. And even if it did, half an interest on it would be actually worth less than half the value because, That's of right. course, you wouldn't have ownership yes. of it. Or Joan has, to, what is Joan? Has well, what Joan is proposing is that if we're interested in doing this, we go to, this, to the county, we buy their interest in it, then we sell the complete 100% interest to DFW. That's oh, so complicated. Joan, Joan. But first, the first thing that needs to happen is to get an appraisal done. Then we can, you know. We'll see what the number is at that. But do point. we want to spend the money if we're not? I mean, do we really want to pay so, off the so the county? Because that's not right. Well, but if we don't, then we're just going to sit on the parcel. I mean, that's. I mean, that's well, well, can okay. we talk? Can we talk to and, Frank? And can we, we ask Frank to come in before I leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we spend a thousand dollars to get an appraisal. Well, the deer, Fishers and Wildlife is doing the appraisal. Okay. So basically, they want half the interest. Yes. The county. The county wants. What it, what, we'll make it up. It's one hundred fifty thousand. They want seventy five of it. I am so mad at that. Yeah. Though, and mind you, the advisory board in the past has been very upset at times with the county going willy nilly and selling its properties that it owns to try and balance its budget. So yes. They prior. That, that's, that's my whole. That's my whole point. Right. You know, is that. They don't need it to balance the budget. Well, you can't balance a budget on one-time revenue. Well, that's right. what I'm saying. Yes. All right. It, so, we all know that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. So can we... Sure, for I mean, I'm willing to have an extra My meeting. Fault. I know I'm like... Well, we could ask Frank to come in, but I mean, remember, he, he reports to the commissioners. The commissioners well, we'll have Mr. O'Brien come in, and who else is on there? No, Tom is not no, on Tom is not on the commission. Sandra Wright, for instance, is yeah. a commissioner. Oh, yes. Oh, but she might be mad because right. of the of the whole <laughs> of yes. the whole field stone. Who knows? Yeah. So I can invite Frank in, but and you can have that matter. discussion. Doesn't matter. It's You're not going right. to mount the anything. Well, they're not going to let go of it. Yeah. So I guess my first thing simply is let's get the appraisal done. We have an article at town meeting. Or yes. abolish the county. <laughs> that would. Well, you've <laughs> always wanted to do that. Uh, I'm not Tom has always wanted to do I'm that. I'm not, I have my 
opinions about that, which I'm not voicing tonight. The only thing the county does right is the pension fund. Which is a separate thing. Which is a separate thing, yeah. right. Because the retirement system is not the right. county it's itself. Not the, county. Fact, the county has its own retirement system. In, in addition have, to. And right. really so you have Plymouth County retirement system, which is just Plymouth up. County, and you got the Plymouth County retirement system, which is everybody else. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have an opinion, and now I don't like it. <laughs> It's a so, but at least I'm telling you that's where, um, the that is where things are now. This was supposed to be wrapped up. I know. Well, okay. Next, Holland Ways. Uh, we ordered the field zone farms, Holland. I'm waiting to hear back from them um, and waste management of whether to agree to Attorney Mayo's revisions on the consent for assignment of the contract. Reminder: Jacob Burgess is having his Eagle yes. ceremony. Um, Scott ceremony here. on the 28th. There'll be rededication ceremony at the Margaret Meyer Amphitheater by the. The library one thirty and a quarter out of here at two p.m. at the town hall. I assume in the great hall, the certificate's been prepared, sitting in the selectman's office. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 We, we also have it. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Municipal vulnerability preparedness grant application. If the board would um, sign a consent letter for that project, that would be yeah. great. So moved. Second. Yes. What? Well, those did you, did we already did a letter of support. I thought. Well. Well, I, I assume you're, look, I found it too. For whatever reason, um, when I was talking with Russ Kleekamp, he didn't seem to realize we had it. Oh, okay. So I, I'm, asking, I the, I'm, I'm asking the board to sign it again and we'll get it done. Um, so there's, was there a motion and everything? Uh, yes, yeah, all those in favor. Yeah. Who did it? Aye. Um, Karen Milius, AIF. As we had not gotten a copy of Mr. Harrison's registration, uh, I sent him a letter last week. I'm shocked. Week. We'll see. I'm um, shocked. Charlie, I'm shocked. Rufus, hearing on the owner's this appeal to Rufus test. judgment, and there will be a hearing in Plymouth District Court on May 9th at 11 a.m. So, and everybody who needs to be notified has been notified about that. Um, fireworks Day. The committee's going to hold evening activities. I believe it's Saturday, June 29th. That's usually when it is. Yeah. But no, they, they are not going to do a family fun day. They just they're starting too, too late. Yeah, it's um, too much. They are going to be selling chocolate bars at town meeting and town election. I talk with Dennis. I talk with Barbara. Everybody's cool. We have an official letter of resignation from Jerry Elliott, both for the Parks Commission and the Municipal School Building Committee. If the board would accept those and send a letter. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Thank you, Jerry. You know, Pam and I will oh, go through are. the town bank forms. Um, we'll see if there's anybody who is interested in serving on the Parks Commission, which is an elected board. If there is, we'll get those to the other remaining members, get a recommendation from them, and have them come in and meet with you to elect someone to fill the term until May of 2020. For the Municipal School Building Committee, it'll be the same process. In this case, we'll ask for a recommendation from the committee, and then also have um, the board interview that person at some future meeting. I do have a copy of the Area 58 Public Access Budget. I believe, Tom, you got your Tom. copy? Yep. Or, yep. Right. I have not had a chance to fully review okay. it, but I will. Uh, let's see. FEMA. No, not FEMA. No, fire suppression. Fire suppression. Fire suppression. Um, we have two vertex, yeah. Right. We have two copies. Uh, let's see if it's all signatures. No, it's in fact, for whatever reason, they decide I should sign it. But if the board authorizes me to sign those, do so, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. FEMA. These and a lot, and you can see all these signed here notes here. Um, Who does it? That would be you, Kim. Oh, do I have a motion would, to allow I me to sign? I would move that we allow the chairperson to sign the copies from FEMA. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we've already talked about hops, um, Halifax Investments Country Club. Okay. Uh, may I ask something first? I'm sorry. It says sign here where it says title and that's it says authorized signature name yeah, you'll need your name there you'll need your title there you'll need to sign okay, there all right, need, yeah. um I, we unfortunately there's only so many things we can put on a sticky no i suppose i suppose the print your name print your name here sign your name here that was a problem so it was okay. a challenge i guess i just want to make sure yes um, we want to talk about hops, Halifax Investments Country Club. There's a revocation hearing scheduled for the 28th at 7:45. Can I just stop you at hops? Remember, I, I reached out to you about a week ago yes, about, about, the deed. about the yeah about the Which registry deed. Yeah. Okay, awesome. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, revocation hearing scheduled for May 28th, 7:45 on its fuel storage permit for failure to pay back taxes. Um, the letter went out to them. 
We did get a talent bank form from Jennifer Campbell. She's interested in serving on the Youth and Rec Commission. I forwarded that to Dick Steele. Okay, so that's another HOPS person, and I did talk. To, I think I talked to Steve Dick about it, but she is awesome. So I mean, I'm would have liked to have just appointed her, but okay. we'll wait on um, checking on the soft recyclables contract. We did get a note from. Um, Harold Sprague, Harold Sprague um, who would like to see the stop sign at the three-way intersection at uh, Walnut and Cherry changed to a flashing one. You've probably seen now this in a few locations around in the area, not sorry here in Halifax. And I know with the solar panel on it. I know that Steve was looking, had run a couple experiments at a couple of places as a possibility. I'm still following up with him if he's interested in making that change. Uh, Mr. Sprague thought it needs to, the stop sign there needs to be more visible. People basically are blowing through it um, without stopping. Um, he thinks the flashing sign, which is activated, I think, either it runs 24 7 or it's activated by a motion detector. Um, would help visibility and encourage people to stop at the intersection. Uh, OCPC, the annual meetings May 9th at 6 p.m. At, at the Mockingbird in East Bridgewater. We have an invite here. I plan on going. Okay. Um, Gee, that's close. May 9th? No, I'll talk okay. to you later. Um, we did get an estimate for repairing the parking lot light over at the library parking lot for $1,500, and I know Scott Mature is working on that. Memorandum of understanding for the Green Community Technical Assistance Program forms are ready for signature for the town to work um, with OCPC on future work um, by them. And so if the um, board would authorize him to sign, and I didn't put the stickies, but I'm hoping that they're It's okay, I can figure that out. So Charlie, I'm on my last of, yeah. uh, second. Um, all those in favor? Second. Oh, I can't second it. No, so um, Garen, and second. then Tom. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So it, this says person completing <coughs> the form. Yeah, I'll take a look. Okay, and then I I can sign it tomorrow. Um, World Series trophy. Uh, the Red Sox are doing their tour of various previews in New England. I didn't know if there was a specific date the board would be interested in, or if they should just work. You know, I know the last time would have been. Oh, well, they displayed it at yeah. the library the last time, didn't they? There was one possibility. I also, we, I think in 13, we had it go through the elementary school. We took mm -hmm. a photograph of each class, if I remember right. We also went down to we uh, always went John down to Barber's shop. Yeah, and I've already mentioned to the Got Red Sox I've already mentioned the Red Sox organization. That needs to be one of the stops. Um, let me see with the school, if there's any interest there. Yeah, you know, yeah. What, what really would be nice, well, it's, I think it's this sunny though, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the baseball season yes. opens up. Yeah, unfortunately it's a little too soon. Yeah, it's too, too yeah. on top of it. Yeah. So I'll check with them. Um, we did that. Uh, fire station no overhead door, we had a note from Scott Returner. Um, he said that two months ago we had had an issue at the fire station. One of the overhead doors that faces the street was damaged and needed to be repaired. Corner of the door was knocked off its track and the lower panel was racked out of square, causing one of the glass panels to shatter. The overhead door company came out, made the needed mechanical repairs, got the door working again, and we made a plan to have a salesman come out to discuss the glass. But he also went to Halifax Glass to see about a piece of plexiglass to fill the space until the repairs could be made. And the owner, Tom Williams, who's a resident here in Halifax, decided to take a look at the door, proceed to cut it, and saw a new piece of glass within an hour. He donated his time and material to get the job done, and Scott says awesome. it saved the town a minimum of seven hundred. I think we'll have to send a letter of oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. A letter of kudos to him. Is that a motion, Tom? Do you have a second? Yeah. All those in favor? All right. Thank we dealt you. with the special wow, police awesome. officer. Um, no word from Mr. Peck on the earth removal permit. We've talked about the revocation hearing for days. Is he still in the hospital? Yeah, I was about to ask that. Right. Pardon? I was about to ask if he's still not. I have no, I, I did not. No knowledge of that, huh? Waiting from Congressman Keating's office about the mailbox kiosk. Troy Lakes Liquors, there's a sign up, um, which I think is self-imposed. I don't think the Board of Health of their building committee. Building I know they've been closed for at least two weeks now. And I think, but I think it says something about they need to do repairs yeah. here, but it was not imposed by the town. No. Um, no, so. they, they, they've had discussions about yeah. what needs to be done, right. but I don't believe it was an order. Um, we talked with the Council on Aging and the Building Committee tonight about Pope's Tower. 
Um, I guess what we would do is have our discussion of the warrant at our meeting on May 7th. Yes. It's a daytime meeting. Yes. Because we'll be, um, we have a poll hearing. Yeah, continue for no delay. I believe at 10. 10 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And we may, and we may. I already have, posted for that, so do you want to repost? Well, we'll, we'll let's, let's wait to see what else we may or may not need to okay. do rather than keep reposting. Um, uh, and I believe that's all I have. I don't know if Pam has entertainment permits. Or yes, we have two open openings. All right, so let me just grab it. This is my last time doing it. Stop it. Now you'll be doing it just in another venue. So. <laughs> I'll give you a year. Uh, I'll give us six months. Well, I was in the town hall to pay my taxes and I was asking about their enterprise account. So I give myself about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Road opening. So we have a road opening for Columbia Gas and it's a four by six road cut tie in by a four by 10 road cut trench. It's 161 River Street to install a new gas service. Um, the building inspector has okayed it with a trench permit. The police department requires one detail. The highway department says it's okay. Water, okay. Conservation, okay. Do you have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? All right. The next one is a um, 4x6 and a 4x10 trench at 13 Home Street, again, to install a new gas service. Um, building inspectors okay with a trench permit. The police department is requiring one detail officer. Highway's okay. Water's okay. Conservation's okay. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, we will be as go as a sign. No, no entertainment things. No, no, no. I have one in the works, but I just got it today, so that'll be next time. Oh, but you won't be there. Well, maybe the so. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to come into the audience. <laughs> I think you could help with the minutes. <laughs> I know. I'll still review minutes. So uh, if there's no other business for the board, I'd like to go in executive session to discuss collective bargaining with highway uh, sergeants, patrol officers, the Fire. firefighters, police chief, the town administrator, also the four waterman grievances, the four being the heavy equipment operator grievance, the do release of documents grievance, the two week suspension grievance, and the termination grievance. Is that it? And said, having, uh, we're doing the executive session because uh, holding the discussion in public would be detrimental to the town's position. Um, I moved that we go into executive session. Second. Tom? Yes. Troy? Yes. We will not be returning. The Kim, yes. Thank you. I'm running out of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> we will not be returning to open session only to um, adjourn. 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 Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.